Oh my gosh. Wow. And it's because Hikaru moved the wrong rook to the G file. He moved his rook from G, the D2 to G2 with check. Rather than rook from E3 to G3, he would have been winning. Instead, he quickly moved the wrong rook. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's, he's shaking his head now and looking around like, oh my gosh, I just wondered that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his eyes. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, oh crap, that was a mistake. <laughs> go on with me here Grandmaster Robert Hess for the second Speed Chess Championship match of the year after a thrilling albeit maybe somewhat surprising result on Tuesday with Levon Aronian moving on in, in fashion against Fabiano Caruana today we have one of the heavy favorites in the entire event of course the overall number one seed Hikaru Nakamura right there at the top of our odds calculations Robert and uh, it would be fair to say that Ifon has her work cut out for her what does she need to do to have a chance to win this match? Um, I'm I was silent there for half a second because it's going to be such a tough task for her. Of course, Hikaru is the odds-on favorite, and he's earned that being one of the best players in online chess history. Um, so I, I don't have an answer to that question, Danny. I wish I did. I've been looking up her games and also looking at Hikaru's games, trying to find, figure out some weaknesses. But at the end of the day, even if the score is in Ifan's favor heading into the bullet, Nakamura's bullet prowess will make sure, absolutely certain, that he's winning this match. Well, he's uh, obviously one of the most feared online chess players uh, ever and uh, considered by many to be the best blitz and bullet. Of course, he's had a couple of tough matches against Magnus in this very tournament, but otherwise we know that Akar Nakamura brings a lot to the table, and that's why you see the stats and odds uh, being the way they are. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit at, throughout the day about the next SCC matchup coming up as well. I want to remind everybody while I have your full attention that we will be here on Sunday night as well. So this is uh, a, a very, very busy week one to start, uh, given that you've already seen, as we said, Aronian and Carwana. Right now, Nakamura and Ifan are throwing down, and then on Sunday we'll be back to see Wesley So and Wei Yi. So, Robert, as we uh, bring up the, uh, the players here so that everyone knows they are with us and waiting, Hikaru Nakamura getting the head bob action on, right? He's got his Red Bull sponsor hat he's wearing. Ifan is here with us as well, and she is ready to go. These, uh, these players have... Uh, have, uh, have, been, have been ready here for a few minutes. So we're going to start the games momentarily. And I uh, want to remind everybody that throughout the day today, if you should choose in your liking, maybe you see a beautiful tactic you like or you just want to send a message of love to someone on the planet, any donations during today's match, whether they be bits through, through Twitch or through Streamlabs, uh, will be directly added to the prize fund that goes 100% to the players, not to Robert's um, sandwich money, not to <laughs> chess.com. Um, but uh, only to the players, and so we will keep you updated throughout the day as that prize fund increases. It's something that we will be doing uh, for the remainder of the SCC season to raise raise funds for these players as they do amazing things on the chessboard. Robert, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to say that Hikaru might need a chiropractor after this because he's bobblehead Nakamura right now. Yep. It's hurting my neck just to look at all that movement there. <laughs> well, we will um, obviously be entertained by Hikaru today, probably both on the chessboard and off. Uh, Ifan is, uh, she's ready to roll. We, we talked to her before it started, and I remember that last year her match, though it is very early right now in China, last year she played Caruana at 6 a.m. So it's 8 a.m. right now in China, so that seems, you know, much more reasonable for her. I think she feels ready and, and, and fresh and looking, looking ready to go. So let's, uh, let's get this show on the road. The matches, the games have begun. Yep, and Hikaru with the white pieces and the 2992 rating. He's not going to be happy when this day is over with his rating because her rating seems to be 2453. That is severely, grossly underrating her skill, obviously. She just doesn't play on chess like I'm too frequently, it seems like. So um, Hikaru is not going to be happy by day's end when he is going to, well, I think he'll drop well below his 2992 current rating. Yeah, likely he will. Um, uh, I don't put the odds at uh, at Ifan not not getting some big wins against him and taking some of those rating points as at uh, very low. So, all right, what do we have here on the board? We've got the uh, the famous Hikaru Nakamura one B three type of game going here. He started with one knight f three, but this is a weapon that Hikaru plays online um, against everybody, regardless of the level of competition. Something he's 
become very good at, even if it's not something he plays over the board in, in more theoretical tournaments. Right. He's exceptional at it. And the good thing for White is that your pieces are free flowing, very easy setup to have. The bad news is you've given up the two bishops. Now, the reason why that can backfire for White is that once this bishop, particularly when on g7, has no counterpart, if that bishop can open itself up, for example, an eventual g5 and f4 or b6 to reroute itself via f8, it's an unopposed dark square bishop. So g5 was played. Perhaps uh, the strategy playing for b6 would have been uh, met by the same, very same b4 idea, but um, that's going to be the key to Black's position. She goes a5 which is a good move because it forces open the file. And so now she has something to work with. She can play the move here, for example, rook a7, or rook a3 even. Maybe rook a3 is smarter, just to hit, hint at entering the c3 square and start putting pieces on that a file. The bad news is that white can actually just remove his rook from d1 to a1 and then compete for that file as well. So thus far, very normal position. I'm waiting for both sides to really create some significant chances with a f4 break for black and for white perhaps playing for b5 and queenside expansion yes yeah, um, so, somehow the uh the rest of the, the the game was not being updated i apologize for that everybody the analysis board does indeed have the right position i will uh do what i can to fix that right now my apologies for that whoa the analysis board yeah there that, that looks right i have it's um, so yeah, I'm seeing here after the move knight b3, take on c5. Hikaru should probably take with his knight on c5. I just don't like having this knight on b3. In fact, it's more of a weakness than a strength. If you go b take c5 back for white here, well then I did take with a knight because if you took back with the pawn, the b pawn immediately, that knight on b3 is a bit misplaced. A rook will come to b and attack it. So by trading on c5 here, the knight. Now white need not worry, and after b takes c5, you can use the open b file for your rook. But if I'm black, I'm really considering, is it time yet to play f4? I think uh, Ifan will, will wait. She'll choose the right moment. She'll play rook a3 here, and then follow that out with queen a5, gaining some steam over there on the queen side. But uh, queen a7 right away can't be a bad move. So many options for black. It's actually surprisingly flexible. And she played f4 immediately. So seeing no downside here well if you go e4 for white you might just be met by a pawn storm further mm -hmm. pawn storm with g4 so she uh, hikara takes and she just takes back and i think black has nothing to worry about in a position like this where um you're not going to have any pawn weaknesses you can just go bishop takes e5 here because you can't take back with a rook on e5 or you're met with rook a1 check and devastating threats in the back rank so after bishop takes e5 you have to play d takes e5 but then black can then take on g3, swap those pawns, and then take over the a file with rook a3. And you'll note that the pawn on c5 becomes much looser mm -hmm. when you have to take with the d pawn. So bishop takes e5 here seems very strong. Well, she's thinking it over. She hasn't, uh, okay, and she, she decides that she agrees with you. One of the things that will obviously be a common theme we highlight throughout the match, given that it is Hikaru uh, playing, uh, time on the clock, right? Right now, Ifon has a, certainly a, a good position for black. I agree with you, no troubles, but... But okay, still plenty of time, even though she is down about a minute on the clock, and now she's trying to transition into an endgame where Black would pretty much never be able to lose. So, smart idea. Yeah, and I'm not worried about her time situation right now, considering she has nearly three minutes. The one-second increment will come in handy. And actually, you know, I'm very much anticipating her bullet skill. So if yep. we see her get into time, severe time trouble, we can see how quickly she plays. The bad news for her current position is her king feels a little bit unsafe here. You know, you would like to bring your king up, especially anticipating a queen trade. But if you ever go king g7, I'm a little concerned. What happens if that queen goes from f3 to f6 mm -hmm. with a check? And then uh, that could be quite problematic. So rook b8 played. She's nice trading move. off the rooks. Yeah, once the rooks get traded, her king has no worries whatsoever. Or the queen. So you know, just trading at final. Make sure there's no, not two major pieces, just one per side. Uh, you should not be in too much danger. So well, Ricardo is drawing the king out there by poking at the h6 pawn now. Now with the king coming to g7, we've got lines like you talked about. Perhaps queen f4, though, is met with something like rook to b1, and, and white just doesn't have anything more after the check on f6. Yeah, so I think queen f4, which is, looks very threatening, just rook b1, trade off those rooks and say, well, I have no real weaknesses to poke at. It's hard to get to the c6 pawn. That's a backward pawn there. Um, and on the other hand, this d pawn may find its way forward in the near future. Yeah. It's not unfeasible at all. So rook b1 here should definitely be played. Trade off those rooks. 
Yeah, um, I don't know what she's uh, thinking about, there but she there is. she goes. There she goes again. There no? she goes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, partner. I uh, missing the uh, missing the pop culture reference. Shame on me. It's okay. Okay, but after the trade on C1, still this feels like an endgame that Black should not lose, although it's hard to, hard to see if Black is, is going to have any winning chances on the same note because it seems like after White gets F4, the threat of playing F5 and maybe having ideas of creating his own pass pawn should be enough for, for White to be equal here, even despite Ephon already having the pass D pawn. And I would not trade queens here because the problem with trading queens is the white king runs the center very quickly yep. and the pawn on c6 is on a light square. Yep. So and then white can also expand with f4, f5. So what I would do yep. is like queen b4, keep the queens on the board, say what is your queen and bishop doing for white? Uh, there are no infiltration points. I play queen b4, I can play d4 myself, play bishop b3 after that. Just start uh, poking. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, I guess this should pan out as well. But so she trades it, but immediately playing f6, I guess, is the one way she could perhaps um, counteract or stop what we were saying. We highlighted that White's king is going to get more active, and that the c6 pawn is on a light square. Therefore, it's an eventual target. But if she's able to get something like d4, bishop d5, and and get her king active quickly, then she should probably be fine, despite despite uh, going against your advice and trading queens. Yeah, I'm not loving this decision i'm just a bit concerned with the c6 pawn you'll the bishop will be tied down to it the white king is darting straight towards the center so right now i put bishop a4 as it's played and now king the, f2 uh, now now perhaps king f5 i guess her hope is to if the king comes into g4 and pokes at g3 it may not be possible for hikaru to be as aggressive with the king as he'd like right and i think she can trade now she can trade bishops at any moment because um white can't create further uh advancement with this yeah. pass pawn f4 and so the bishops get traded the game immediately just results in a draw um, seems likely we'll be headed for a draw on that note at this I point hikaru's gonna move his king towards the queen side perhaps but you can never take on c6 now with the bishop on e8 so that's the problem is if you even if you go king d4 c3 b4 a5 king b6 and then attack c6 with your bishop you can't take it because the d pawn is very passed so it's not like there's anywhere for white to go you, i think you're right this should just fizzle out in the next few moves Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Well, um, Hikaru deciding whether he has anything more than just a repetition at this point. Still going to try to wiggle something around. It wouldn't be the first time he's, you know, sh either shamelessly flagged or swindled somebody in an equal ending online. So <laughs> that's absolutely true. Uh, it's happened. You know, he's definitely beaten me in some of those positions. He also just wiped me off the board many times. So, um, yeah, he, he knows a thing or two about flagging his opponents. And she's actually you know, getting into that territory where she's 51 seconds left. Uh, it's really an easy half point here. So he shouldn't... So Hikaru shouldn't push too much further, I don't think. But for Ifan, well, she's holding well, but she just needs to stop spending so much time. You don't want to tempt Hikaru into flagging you, is essentially my point. Yeah. Well, I think she's trying to make sure she doesn't really have any losing chances, that she's not missing something. But I agree with you that the one way she would lose this at this point is if we're in the same spot and she's under five seconds. Remember, everyone, this year it's only a one-second increment in the five-minute and three-minute portions. Last year's Speed Chess Championship was two seconds, which a big, big difference, especially at this level when uh, you're if you're not pre-moving, Oh, she's in trouble now. Yeah, I was going to say, I was stopping on my words, but that changes, <laughs> that changes big time. And now Hikaru gets the head bob going much more aggressively. Well, they're, they're, the king's in. So let's see, can you hold this king? I don't want to play king f8 and bishop e8 and just get passive. I guess you but still I don't can't think she has a. Pawn. You still can't take the pawn on c6. So play yeah. bishop h5 and bishop back to e8, something like that. You it can't should, trade it should still be a draw, right? Because white can't trade. Ooh, Ooh, whoa, what? She, what? What was going on that we missed? There's no, no way that was, she's holding That was down. bad. That, that was a freak out in time trouble. She must have hallucinated a winning plan there for Hikaru because I don't think there was one. Nope. Now there is. Yeah, now there's a and, plan called take, bishop, take on c6 and, and queen. You uh, just go king, king e5. Yeah, you can protect the f-pawn as well. Wow, so how did she... What Oof. did she calculate back here to justify playing d4? Wow, what a what a what a tough loss to start today's match. 
Um, I think I think she failed to recognize that she could just trade the bishops off and it's a draw. I really right. think that once the king and pawn got so advanced, she was worried that um, trading the bishops would lead to a winning sort of ending for Hikaru. And well, that uh, was not just D four just kind of handed him the game. She was getting time trouble. That's really right. what happened there. Okay. Well, uh, big win for Hikaru, uh, getting getting a uh, kind of sneaking away with with the, a victory there. He is the first one on the board, um, and uh, still still rocking out to whatever it is. I wonder if it's the offspring today, or if he if he's you know going with some slow jams. So. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's just listening to some rock or something. The way he's moving his head. Yeah, um, he is playing from Canada, right? So that's right. Maybe Maybe he's getting some Drake going on, some Celine Dion. <laughs> the uh, the Canadian playlist. Um, what about Biebs? You're not going to have some Justin Bieber in there? No, nah, definitely not Bieber. Oh, well, shame on you. All right. All right, so what do we have here? We've got a, a Peartz type of position, classical structure. So we're not, we're not having kings on opposite sides of the board for a mating net. But... Um, Already feels like Black is pretty comfortable here, and Yifan going into an early, an early think tank to try to remember how she wants to play this setup. But I, I'm a little biased, I guess, because I've played so many Sicilians as Black, where I was worried about getting checkmated. Um, even though this isn't a Sicilian, the fact that Black has a, a setup with a very, very safe kingside makes me feel like Black is pretty comfy here. Yeah, for sure, and it's clearly we're in Nakamura's wheelhouse, where he's moving very quickly. He knows these openings. He plays them a lot online, and you see the clear target in the e4 square now. If you play bishop c4, I think you can get away with it for the time being, because if you take on e4, yep. I'll take back, and rook takes c4, bishop takes f7 check is the tactic that always takes advantage of the rook being a little too advanced in the e4 square. So um, she let Hikaru take on d3, and well, there's nothing really for black to worry about in a position like this. In fact, black is probably just better, yeah. and you have the two bishops. You don't lack the same space that you do in other uh, Pierce situations, and well, Already you have a problem in the E4 square. So things going very well for Hikaru hey, right now. Although that was an instructive tactic you highlighted there. I showed it for everyone on the analysis board. I think uh, being aware of that common, atta common tactical idea also occurs for black in Italian structures with the colors reversed. So this idea where the bishop can take on F7 and you can fork, fork the, the king and rook. One, one to put in your pocket, everybody who's watching, as something to note. All right, but Hikaru looks like he's just going to be better in the end game with white immediately struggling to guard the e-pawn and even if somehow I don't win it I have the bishop pair if I'm black develop the bishop to e6 and you have this three on two which probably is a much better majority than white's four on three yep and the b3 square being a uh, vulnerability is annoying for white to deal with because it might prevent you from doubling rooks yep. when I put Put my bishop on b3 with a tempo, let's say, if he works on d1, then I can swing my piece to the d file. That said, um, white is tactically hanging on to his pawn e4 for the time being with a back rank check always being the issue. So if you can play a move like rook a c1. I don't know what that does really. Uh, you can play rook d2, trying to double up the rooks, but black's plan is very straightforward. Play bishop e6, connect the rooks, uh, maybe go h6, even think about going g5 and expanding on the king side. The good news for White, is, as I mentioned, is the e4 pawn is defended. She played rook ac1, acknowledging the fact that you can't take on e4. And so from Black's point of view, if you played bishop e6, I can always play knight d4, for example. So mm -hmm. knight d7. All right. Knight d4 looks, yep, played. And watch out for knight takes c6 as a tactic. doesn't work now. Yeah. But before that knight moved to b6, knight, oh, wait, I was, why did I, I think that worked? There's a bishop on c8. Ignore me. Um, no, it's okay. It's late there for you. <laughs> it's only eight eight sixteen. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's way past your bedtime. Um, you're right. All right. Well, yeah. No, there was no knight takes c six, and now Efon is is threatening to maybe get the rooks doubled on the d file, especially if she can play b three. Bishop c one was a nice quick move just to guard a three with the idea that Wait, she's going to now try knight takes c six. Knight takes c six works now. Oh, she missed it. Ah, knight takes c6 work now, everybody. And the reason was that after rook takes d1, knight takes, it unleashes a discovery against the knight. So Yifan misses an opportunity to win a pawn there, and that may be the only opportunity she gets in this game. Because now that black has gotten the two bishops out, Robert, this just feels like white is going to be strangled here on the uh, queen side. This rook on c2 feels bad. 
Yeah, it feels very bad. In fact, it has nowhere to go. So, you know, if you play a move like b3, you have problems in the a3 pawn and in the b3 pawn. And bishop g5, now black can just play f6, sort of ignore it. And then look at the three on two advantage for black on the, the queen side. Play b5, a5, and just continue pushing those pawns. Yeah, uh, I. it's unfortunate she missed that tactic, but Hikaru playing super fast here now with four minutes to two minutes, as we said in the last game. This will be a theme throughout the match. If Yifan, uh consistently gets under time pressure as she did last game, despite playing very well, probably should have drawn that game, um, you know, she eventually eventually panicked because of time pressure. So this is this is a theme here. This is it could be where the writing is on the wall if she if she uh but then again it's hard to judge when you're playing somebody who's really, really good at chess, Robert. Sometimes you have to think about things. So you know, I don't know if you've yeah. ever had that experience, but Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm just in a little bit of shock still from that first game and yeah. how this position turns so quickly because Hikaru playing just instantly, every single move is yep. within a couple seconds, and that's why it makes him. That's what really makes him such a hard player to beat. It's not that you don't get good positions against him. Yes, for the most part, he is outplaying you. That's just a fact. But as you've seen from many of strong grandmasters playing him, you can get good positions against him. It's converting it that's nearly impossible. Yep. There seems to be a lot of discussion in the chat about whether or not we will see an adoption today. Hikaru Nakamura has adopted a few people um, in his life. For those who don't speak online chess pop culture, adoption is when you win 10 games in a row. Uh, there can be no breaks, no, no, no losses or draws in, beneath, in between those 10 games. So if you win 10 games in a row, you have officially adopted yourself someone. And we see Eric Hansen there with the, uh, looks like it's um, kind of a pacifier in his mouth. Because Papa Hikaru is is adopting him, so anyway, <laughs> um, maybe maybe we'll start adding odds for adoption into the stats that we have that we've shown. Odds odds for that we'll see an adoption during a match. That sounds like a fun a fun stat to add. I I like it. It would be interesting. You know, I don't know how you predict it, but if you can get that going, I'm all about it. Yep. Ooh, F4. So the idea being, if you take on F4, the bishop knight takes B2. Yep. Removes removes the guard of the C3 knight. Yep. So that's. Looking pretty. And that means that if she cannot take it, assuming we're going to see either knight h1 to f2 or knight back to e2, black can reinforce a bind with something like pawn to g5 and eventually switch back to the d file with the rook. Oop. So she decides she doesn't really have a lot of options here, unfortunately. Um, but I think we're about to see the uh, the one seed move to a 2-0 lead here. This looks, this looks pretty rough. Yeah, this is not looking fun at all right now. I... Uh... I don't know what she can do because you can't really you move the knight away. The bishop protects the knight on b2. Now knight d3, you win the e5 pawn anyway. This is um, that's that's true. E dog just pointed out that Hikaru is not on the best connection. You can actually see the two bars above his uh, above the board there. Everyone, the bars there representing uh, your local connection to the chess.com server. So Hikaru looks like he's in a beautiful location with what he's looking out at, but maybe not the strongest internet. So oh, there he goes. Now it's back. Yeah, it almost is he outside? Like I don't even know what's going on there. But it looks like he's, he's yeah you know, looking out on, on, onto the ocean or something. It looks pretty nice. It's yeah. Canada, isn't everywhere in Canada nice, or just the people? <laughs> Hopefully both. Yeah, I've never, I've never been to Canada actually. So okay, Rook D A, just take the open file. Looks good enough. You'd like to, yeah. This is just pretty straightforward, and she has less than ten seconds, so very difficult to hold and uh, n not having enough time to do it makes it even harder. So here comes the a3 pawn falling. Yeah, bishop d5, just don't give any counter chances and yep. take on a3. You could also play bishop to b3 immediately. Maybe he calculated that trading on b3 probably wasn't the best option for white, but um, it's tough. It's tough to play Hikaru Nakamura, and uh, right now, Ifan is, is remembering that. So um, here we go. now he'll probably... Putting the, play the bishop back to c4. Still no yeah. reason to rush. Right? And only yep. then take on a3. Yep. And look at this now. He's using his time here because he, um, you know, he's winning. He knows he's winning. And it's just a matter of conversion. So he spent his yep. time at this moment. And now the two pass pawns over there are just going to easily promote. Yep. Okay. And she resigns with point one. Hikaru Nakamura now has a two-game lead in this match. And uh, for all those of you who may or may not just be joining us, welcome. This is the second Speed Chess Championship match of the year. 
in our bracket. We know that we've already seen, uh, we've actually already seen Levon Aronian move on. And so the winner of uh, today's match will move on to face the winner of MVL versus Lanier Dominguez Perez. So that should be fun as well. So uh, make sure you mark your calendars or clear your Sunday. We have another match on Sunday, Wei Yi versus Wesley So. Yep. My, ex my schedule is clear, Danny, in case you are concerned. Yep. No, again, I, I know you re revolve your life around chess.com shows, so we appreciate that. <laughs> It's what I live and breathe for. You caught me. Um, okay, is, can Black play C5 here? I, I see a Rook on C8, a Queen on C2. I always want to play C5. Yeah, you do. That is a thing you do. I can confirm that. You're not making that up. <laughs> um, yeah, C5 is going to come, and uh, we're going to get a Hanging Pawn structure. So C5 now? No. She plays for another plan that's typical in this structure. Knight E4 is potentially preparing ideas like f5 if you really want to get aggressive on the king side um, but sometimes it's just a way that black can prepare to simplify adding a trade of minor pieces and still going for an idea like c5 and you can also play the other knight to f6 and just back it up if you don't want to play a move like f5 and potentially weaken your light square diagonal so she'll take back after ooh knight, i was going to say we, i thought we'd see knight d2 there but he returns the favor puts the knight right on e5 just take it. I with think the knight. You could even, yeah, I was going to say take with the knight and play bishop a3, right? Yeah, or, or bishop b4, one of those moves. I guess bishop b4 is a little strange, but um, seems to be still possible. But yeah, taking it with the knight, it, you don't want to take it with a bishop, give your opponent an unopposed dark sword bishop. That looks uncomfortable. So I would prefer, if I'm black, just take with the knight. And after a pawn takes, play bishop a3, like you said. Yeah. Because you can't really infiltrate via d7. My rook's perfectly placed in c8. So after, in, if we exchange a bunch of pieces, and knight takes d5, pawn takes, bishop a3 takes, takes rook d7, my rook on c8 protects my c7 pawn, which means I can play bishop c6 and just kick your rook out. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a, And the pawn e4 is well protected with the bishop on b7 here. So it's not like you have to be too much uh, of a concern about that fall, that pawn being lost. That fall, I said, but I meant the pawn. Okay, so she played bishop a3. Great. But the, it, Dan, it's one of those moments where you have to do that more quickly, I feel like. Um, yeah. She spent a lot of time there, over a minute on the clock before playing knight takes d5. And, and, and bishop a3. Yep. Yeah, you, you can afford to, to spend a minute in a five minute portion. I understand that. You know, it's not a great decision, but you can afford it. But as the time control gets quicker, it's something that I think Ifan will have to really work on is just going with her gut a little more. Stop questioning herself she's a very very strong player obviously um so just making the moves yep no you're right especially because it's one of those things where right now it seems like we're overly judging the time management she still has plenty of time on the clock all that stuff but as we've already seen and as these games go on spending 30 seconds on something you could have played in five seconds or even you know a minute on something you should have played in 20 seconds it adds up and uh okay well here she does have control over the only open file should be enough of a position for black to be just fine, but we've been, we've seen this before, so we'll see what happens as, as time pressure ensues. We've had our first few donations. Thank you, everybody. Remember, all donations, whether via bits or however you choose to make that, go directly into the pockets of the players, so we appreciate that. They appreciate that. A4. Yep. So let's see. So a A5, H4, playing on opposite sides of the board. Where is white going to try to make progress from? I guess mm -hmm. bishop f1 to g2 may force black to take on d1 at some point and yep. cede control over the uh, d file. But that said, it just looks a long way away to actually make something really work. Uh, the pawn e4 is well defended by that bishop. And it, you, you distract all of your pieces to actually take the pawn e4. You lose control of the d file. So um, yeah, I guess you can't really rush that either. I think black is totally fine here. Yep. And she's, she's catching up on the clock because Hikaru has been spending some time. Yeah, well, he's trying to think of ways that he can create some sort of wiggle room, something worth pushing on for. Uh, right now, he doesn't see much else to do besides trade rooks and queens, potentially. So, so one thing that's interesting is they transition is whose pawn might be easier to target, the e4 or the e5 pawn. Both are potentially weak, but I don't think either side really has the 
enough firepower to go to go gather the pawn. Right. I would say that blacks might be a little bit weaker because king h2, h3, g4 to f4 is like something that's feasible. Mm -hmm. Whereas from black's perspective, how do you as your king even approach the e5? Pawn? Right. What and, she and, might do though is play king e7 and then f, like move her f pawn. But now she won't with the pawn. I was going to say that one potentially instructive thing to point out about what Hikaru is doing here, everybody, with this pawn on h5 and the pawn on g4 is he's setting up what's known as a grip pawn structure where you actually have even though the pawns are symmetrical because your pawns are further advanced you're constantly in a position where there may be some tactics down the road you 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 get the king here and eventually you can play g5 right ignore the bishop because uh let's say it's gone you would create more avenues and more potential opportunities to get a queen despite the pawns being structurally symmetrical so um i'm not saying it's going to be enough to win but i think that if he could somehow target the e4 pawn Robert, it'd be very hard for Yifan to ever play a move like f5 to defend it because Hikaru's pawns are so so advanced, and those that a move like f5 would create weaknesses that that maybe um, maybe would be a problem. But yeah, as I'm talking about this, it doesn't look like it's going to be a reality at least yet. But it is it is good to note that this space advantage could be something that comes back to bite Yifan. Yeah, I mean the king, unfortunately for White, cannot reach that f4 square without running right to bishop g5 yeah. check to force the king back, right? So, yep. and now the the bishop on c1 can't move either because the pawn a3 will be hanging. So the only way to make any semblance of progress would be to move your king from to d e1 to d2 to c3 and play b4, but that doesn't really make progress. Just trading off more pawns. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're, you have any major pieces to start pushing forward and using open files. So. Uh, they're sort of repeating moves. I think this game should just fizzle out. But Hikaru won't let it happen so easily, I feel like. Yeah, I guess if you could put the king on c3 and the bishop on d2 to play imaginary chess and then play b4, because the bishop on d2 is guarding the b4 pawn through the king, the king may be threatening to go to d4 in some spots, but even that would likely just run into a move like pawn c5 check. So it just it doesn't seem that either side really has an ability to get to one of these magic squares to, to undermine or, or attack the weak pawn. So, uh, agreed town, population us. Boring town, population this position. Um, <laughs> and uh, shout out to all the fans in chat, the one and only Chess Bay, all of those who are with us. Thank you for, thank you for being here. A little bit of a different time. Normally we do these things in the morning. Shout out to uh, our last bit donation there from Ignoble. Yeah, I, they're just repeating moves. I see so many king moves in the recent stretch. I'm waiting for this game to be a draw so we can move on to the next one. Yep. Oh, and NJ Greg just uh, NJ's style. here. NJ and Greg, the baller. Wow, look at that. I love our team working so hard to keep some of these emotes updated. We have a tilt emote now, which I think was added in honor of the one and only Fabiano Caruana's tilting performance. Whoa. Wait, what just happened here? Oh, this sorry, looks, I wasn't paying attention. This looks bad for White. He So he went F3 or F4, allowing Ampassant just trying to change up the pawn structure. Yeah. And that does not look like a good transition for, for White, at least. I mean, I don't think Black can do anything. Like, whereas your, your king can't move into the game, your pawns, while they're double and isolated, they're protected by your two bishops. So I think after A takes B4, A takes B4, well, you can just go king d7, king e7, king d7, king e7. It's not like white can attack anything either. So I think Hikaru is doing one of those moves where you emphasize that the position is so equal that mm -hmm. even if I give myself a terrible looking position, wait, that Ooh. e5 pawn. Bishop I, a3. Wait, this is this this is bad for white now. You have to go king f4 to defend the pawn, and yep. then black can go g5 check. And despite what we said earlier about white's pawns being further advanced, now they're also much weaker than they were before. So he's he's all in. Hikaru is tilting his own position, actually. Um, yeah, he, he's made some really bad decisions here. Well, I guess the, the, the desperate... There was no reason to be desperate given the match situation. Um, and you would say that maybe he feels that he can afford to, to kind of push in one game. But um, if, if Yifan gets a win here, and that gives a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum, who knows? So that this could be one he regrets. I think he wants to win every single game. That's uh, you know yeah. because he's getting one rating point per win. At least so so far I've seen that. That he, he can't even afford a draw to keep his rating as high as it is. But yeah, you know he's down a pawn now, just down a clear pawn. So, so the Bishop question D7? is, can, can, yeah. can Black win? So how does she? 
She likes the bishop on e5 to keep protection of c7. Okay, so now that she's backed it up to d6, I think she'll try to start bringing the king in over here yep. to the king's side, king e7, king f6. You can um, also play king c8 to b7 if you want. She plays e5. Okay. And where does her king get to? That's the, I guess yeah. you can play g6 at some point. So play bishop f8 and then g6, but okay. I'm not seeing total progress here. So if she puts the bishop on f8 and pushes g6, she's or g5 or g6, she's not worried about the pawn becoming weak. But again, even if you get that, it's still hard to see progress. So despite Hikaru's super aggressive approach and the fact that uh, you know black is up a healthy pawn, still feels like the most likely result is a draw. Yeah. And something tells me that Hikaru likes his chances so much in a time scramble that he's... Uh, He's playing for a win right now? He's playing for a win right now, right? As crazy as that sounds, but I know you, you finished my sentence because you knew what I was going to say. That, that That's exactly what Hikaru would be thinking that he's, he's capable of doing. He's down a pawn, has no, no justification to be trying for anything but a draw, but wouldn't be the first time. Oh, b6 is a threat now. Watch out. Okay. So now g5, g5. He's going to play g5, g5. and get past eight. For dunk a bunk, there. that's the there. grip. The grip comes into play, everybody. These are the types of tactics you have when your pawns are more advanced than your opponents, despite complete symmetry. As Hikaru takes a confident swig of his Red Bull, um, this is exactly the type of thing to take note of. That you can make a sacrifice that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do, purely because in end games, it's not often how many pawns you have, but who gets a queen first. And, and he's uh, gonna flag her. And he's gonna yeah, flag her. Just. Whoa. This is, That's this a free bishop. Bananas from the perspective that Hikaru has no justification for playing the way he did, yet we knew exactly what he was doing, that he was playing for a win down a pawn in a bishop ending. Amazing. Yep. Wait, why bishop f Okay, he just pushes e pawn. He could have played bishop g7 to keep the h pawn, but this is very easy. e6, yeah, e7, e8. Straightforward, and we may have a two bishop checkmate on the board if we get lucky. Yeah, this is. Uh... Amazing. I think she's, she's going to resign. Yep. Amazing is what that was right there. I mean, seriously. And it's frustrating to be in Ifan's shoes. I mean, she had no reason to think that she should lose that game. But what did we say earlier in, the, in, this, uh, in the, that game, Robert? We talked about the time management earlier when it didn't seem as important. And I uh, came back to bite her. Yep. This is, it's just unfortunate because, of course, if this was a cl classical game then she would have had no problem defending. But we keep seeing our time ticking down, and it goes to show. We, we made a comment, and the move knight takes e5, followed by bishop a3. You and I talked about it immediately. And if, if we're seeing it, there's no doubt in my mind that she's seeing it, but she's just not playing it as quick. And, of course, we don't have the responsibility that the players do. Yep. We don't have you know, to worry that the result may hurt, hurt us emotionally, all that stuff. So we can just suggest something, and if it's wrong, well, it doesn't affect us. But at a certain moment, you have to give up your sort of perfectionism. And we've talked about this about ourselves, Danny, mm -hmm. that sometimes we just spend too much time trying to find the yep. perfect move, and it really comes back to haunt us. So yep. I think Ifan, this game, she's playing very quickly. She knows that she should get an opening advantage uh, with the white pieces against the Pierce. But yeah, missed opportunities thus far is yep. the story of the day. And two games, really, that were missed opportunities precisely because it was self-induced time trouble, right? The first game was one that she shouldn't have lost. Um, so she's really done pretty well as black, actually, from the perspective that had two positions as black. She had no business losing, but because of time pressure, she wasn't able to hold up against Hikaru's, Hikaru's poking and prodding that he does so well. But um, OK, so let's talk about this one here. She does have an opening advantage. This pawn on d5 represents significantly more space for white. And bishop h6 is nice. a4 is a good move that keeps black's pawns here on the queen side, kind of kind of stuck and preventing Sicilian style expansion. And just play knight d4. Knight d4. Because, um, Bishop f3. Have... The point you on knight watch... d4, everybody, is you can't take on d5. Well, maybe you can. That's actually now I started second-guessing myself. Ah, uh, because you're saying that he'll just go all in and open up his king and doesn't care because a pawn is a pawn? Yep. Okay. But she did it, and he didn't take it on d5. And now you definitely don't want to take on d5 for black because yep. your a6 pawn is hanging. So if you're white, you consider playing h4 or maybe queen g5 so you can threaten knight f5 check. 
that could be a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, I like queen so. g5, but I also like just the overall structure here for white Robert. If she plays bishop f3 to guard d5, this rook on d1 has sort of served its purpose. Maybe flip it over to the e file and target the e7 pawn, right? That's a, uh, a Marco hop structure we have here, and white should be better if you can just start exerting pressure against the backward e7 pawn. So. Right, and black's real source of counterplay is the c file, and the knight is sort of stuck to c3, mm -hmm. and maybe black will check on knight e5 to c4 as a source of counterplay. Yeah. So she plays rook c1 for that very exact purpose, that now my pawn is c2, I don't have to worry about forever. If my knight moves from c3, I can play c4 myself, and knight e5 played now, still can go rook e1, as you suggested. Yep. Once more, the pawn on d5, it's hard to take that pawn with the pawn on a6 hanging. That's a very important pawn to the queen side structure. So queen e3, rook e1, um, all of these moves seem to make perfect sense. Queen g5 is a third option. No, but I, I think you're right. These moves are intuitively easy to play as you understand the structure. So it's something we're right here. It might, you know, she's spending a lot of time here already, right? She spent 46 seconds on the last move, and, and she's on pace to do the same here. So this is where it starts to be tough. And as you said, easier for us to say, right? Uh, but I think you have to, at some point, you have to remember that a lot of times in Blitz, just the fact that you're playing confidently and quickly is just as important as playing the best move a lot of the time. So, yep. Um, okay, queen e3 goes for it. Almost 3,000 of you with us now. Thanks for being here. Thanks for spending your Thursday night with me and the Bobster. Your mom likes when I call you Bob, right? She's listening right now. She's probably very mad at you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, a, nice, a nice thing, Danny, about knight f3 is that yeah. after knight c4, I can take, and your b6 pawn hangs. Ooh, very nice, yeah. So you're offering the knight trade without uh, any consequence of the knight coming to c4, because if I wasn't going to take on c4, your knight's going to win my b2 pawn. So I get away of taking on c4 and taking on b6. And now if you play knight takes f3 for black, white just takes back with the bishop on f3, you solidify this d5 pawn, which is really encroaching on black space. You're restricting mm -hmm. black's pieces. Yep. And well, we can start if we start trading the knights, for example, a knight coming to e4 after that, then white can expand on the queen side at long last by playing c4, or b4, and things like that. Yeah, and that's a great point, Robert. Obviously, you highlighted earlier that kind of the C file is awkward for white and, and uh, that that might be one thing black has going for him. So if if white could move the knight and get C4 and B4, you start to realize white has a three on two pawn majority over here. And uh, again, black's majority is not effective here because the E7 pawn is backward. In fact, it start, it's starting to make me think that Hikaru might try to find some way to aggressively play E6 at some point if he can get away with it. Um, the, the risk of ever moving this e-pawn, everybody, is that it always opens up attacking chances against the d-pawn. Yep. But, uh, okay, queen c5. This is a good move for black. Yeah, I think, well, if I take on e5, you take on e3 first, and so you give white that sort of awkward backward e-pawn, um, but at the same time, black love double e-pawns himself. Mm -hmm. So if I play knight e5, you take on e3, and then, at the end of the end, line, white has e4, too, which... And white, white also has d6, just trying to trade off that uh, past d-pawn mm -hmm. for this, the e-pawn to get the d6 square for your rooks. So I expect her to play queen f4 because she's thinking for so long that she just wants... She's going to avoid it altogether. But uh, I think you can get away with knight takes e5, queen takes e3, pawn e3, pawn takes e5, d6, and um, sort of taking over the d-file. That will become the most useful file. Yep. And well, and, and what I was highlighting is that white could even play e4 at the end of that line, Robert, because the king comes to f2 and e3, holds down the e4 pawn, which frees up the knight. And, and again, white has a majority over here on the queen side. She goes for your line with d6. Um, yep. But I'm not, I'm not sure that a slower approach there of e4, king f2, king e3 wasn't, wasn't also good. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Uh, I think that, you know, she sort of sees the moment here. She saw that if her rook can get to d6, White should probably be better here. So now take, take, and rook b6. Just get your rook behind that pawn, actually just go and win it. Um, looks pretty nice for uh, for white. So rook, ooh, actually rook b6. I'm starting to think of exchange sacrifices. If rook takes c3, pull in knight d5. It's getting complicated here. Yeah, knight d5, rook b5, not possible because of knight to c3, everybody, which would be a whole lot of forks. Um, in fact, I'm sure that's what she's thinking of right now. Hikaru 
kind of kind of calm there, right? No longer rocking the magical head bob. She decides she's just going to go take B5 right away, right? A pawn's a pawn. Yeah, this is... Um, so knight g3. Okay, compensation. Where's this bishop going to? If you play bishop d3, black can play e4, for example, and keep at that bishop. The good thing about black playing e4 from white's point of view is that the bishop on b7 looks worse. But um, taking off the bishop off the board... Oh, so he went bishop e4. Yeah, I, guess I like that. that. I mean, as Kingish Gambino is, is flexing the fork e mode in the chat, he's right. You can't move the bishop from d3 without knight e2 check coming in. And uh, bishop e4 is a strong move. Yeah, and so what? So knight c3, so rook takes c3. Don't we have a problem with that fork again? Yeah. Uh -oh. Fork town. Yeah, this is not looking very Bishop good here. Bishop takes d3, c takes d3, rook takes c3. No, take on c3 first. Okay. Takes, so rook takes. Pawn, and then bishop takes d3. And you win a piece at the end of the line. So it Four looks like problems. it'll be... Yeah. So now maybe bishop takes e4? Is that an intermediate move? I think it's be... the only way. Yeah, bishop e4, the point, everybody, is that, yes, the fork happens, but the rook on c3 hangs at the end. So we'll see what Hikaru's calculated. I'm sure he's anticipating bishop takes e4. And she's in time trouble once more. This is really not looking good for her. Yep. 17 seconds of counting down. So she did take on e4. Now if rook takes e3, I guess white has to play king f2. And then rook takes e4, king takes g3. We're in that weird end game with rook and four, two rooks and four versus two rooks and four. But yeah. the, 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 the pawns are split for white which yep. is either a huge advantage or a huge disadvantage right here in this position because of the exposed king on g3. I'm a bit concerned about how this will pan out. I like what she's doing here, though. I think the all-in approach with the pawn that you already had your rook behind, basically reminding Hikaru that if he plays for rook e2 and takes, he may end up having to take some sort of perpetual because this queen is coming. But I think it, something tells me Hikaru won't take perpetual. He'll try for mate. So how does that happen? Something with well, f5 and f4? F5 for sure. Uh, yeah, so he's playing tickle right now, which makes sense when your opponent only has 10 seconds. He's just trying to trying to poke and prod, but but it's risky, right? I mean, it, it, the nice thing is he probably has a perpetual no matter what, but she's already in a position, Robert, where even if there is a mate and he pushes F5, she just has to go, go right ahead and just push the C pawn in and hope there isn't one. Yeah, and he's doing a great job of using his time at critical moments here. So mm -hmm. I would try, because we, we see F5 as C7, then rook h2. Is that an option to try to check me in on the third rank? So you, you know, said rook e to f5, h2. Okay, f5 first. c7 and rook to h2. Threatening I rook guess, takes h3 and rook d3 mate, everybody. Two, but you, two mates. Uh, you have king g3 there, so right? it doesn't work out. It looks like it's just uh, just more tickle. Um, so maybe, maybe after f5, c7, can I go g5, threatening e4 check and rook e3 mate? King so, e3. Three. So f4. No, this is mate. Ah, she just mated herself. Yeah, rook f to e2, rook, rook e3 check. Rook e3, rook... king g4, rook yep. g3, rook over wait, to... he... wait, he blundered. Ca queen protects h3. Ca queen protects h3. There's no way he... Oh, she, she... No, she, she resigned a winning position for her. Was that really winning? Yes, you protect h3 by c8 equals queen. Oh my gosh. Wow. And it's because Hikaru moved the wrong rook to the G file. If he moved his rook from G, the D2 to G2 with check, rather than the rook from E3 to G3, he would have been winning. Instead, he quickly moved the wrong rook. Yeah, and he's, so uh, he's shaking his head now and looking around like, oh my gosh, I just blundered that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his eyes. <laughs> he's, uh, like, he's like, oh crap, that was a mistake. <laughs> yep. Uh, he's funny. Um, and you, I, Danny, we know, we absolutely know he's going to mention it in the you know, post-game interviews, post-match yeah. interviews, I should say. And they're like, well, in that fourth game, actually, I was missed that I wasn't checkmating, yeah. and so I got lucky there. But that was... Yeah. You know, that's the, one good, the one great thing... Well, not the one, but one of the great things about Hikaru is he, he always wears his emotions on, on his sleeve, and so you just know how he feels at all times. He's still doing it, and I know that you have your... Hikaru fathead somewhere. Oh, of course I do. do I've, got, I've got uh, every Hikaru fathead the, uh, anyone could ever ask for. So. Do, do you have the Hikaru absolute shock 
Nakamura. <laughs> I, no, I, no, you're right. I, I have angry Hikaru and happy Hikaru because I couldn't <laughs> spend that much money on fatheads, my own little weird <laughs> games I play. The first time Hikaru saw the fatheads in my office, he said, dude, you're weird. Yeah. So. I mean, he's not wrong. And I said, I said, dude, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. He's, he's still shaking his head. Like, he's really bothered by that. Yeah, well, he just blundered into Maiden. It, 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 Ifan is, unfortunately, right now, just seems a little shook, right? I wouldn't say the tilt the tilt is, is there already, but she knows she has it, and she has a tough day ahead of her. She is the 16th seed. Hikaru is the one seed. But she's had three games that arguably could have had different results, right? Two games yep. she should have drawn, and that last game, Hikaru blundered into a, uh, into a lost ending, but, but she kind of already had her mind made up that she was mated, so... Those are the things we highlight and we suggest the word tilt because they're sort of emotional things that have not necessarily everything to do with the X's and O's. Yeah, and it's one of those situations that really illustrates why they're, they're good moves and they're really fast moves. And Hikaru tends to do both, but in that endgame, uh, Ifan just did not have the time to come up with the resources to save her. So in Queen G5 here in this particular game, that was a good decision because now G2 mate is threatened, so you have to trade queens. And once this queen trade happens, Knight e4, I just take this on e4, and black enters a great endgame. This yeah, this is phenomenal. Sure. Mainly everybody because the d-pawn is just the only positional weakness on the board. Hikaru and can the e go the ahead. e-pawn's hanging, Danny. Rook fd1, knight takes e5. That's a free yeah, pawn. Yeah, just straight up. Rook fd1, knight takes e5, because that's a pin. How is it that every time we have a pin, it's with a rook? I don't even know how. Oh, he's shaking his head. He missed that. Yep. He, he looks... Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit uh, frazzled right now. Well, Yifan needs to get a win. She needs to stop the bleeding and get a win. So will will an extra pawn be enough? Uh, we'll see. But um, She's up on the clock, too. This is yeah, actually they, by far her best game well, this you far. you just jinxed her. She's no longer up on the clock, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. whoops. <laughs> no, but you're right, though. A much, much closer uh, setting here on time. Although, what's she thinking about now, right? Okay, she's up a pawn. She can she can decide. What, I think she's probably calculating things like rook d8. Do you want to allow take on e5, trade on d1, and then take e4? Or does she actually like the knight on the board? She decides she wants to keep the knight, which I think is the right decision to play for a win. Bring the knight to f6 and, and then work on your two-on-one advantage over here. Yeah, so right now you can't go to f6 with bishop d3, but you can go to c5 and then take on d5 next move probably. So yeah, knight c5. Knight c5 oh. makes sense. Why? Uh, actually, makes a lot of sense. So In does fact, e5, honestly. Pawn e5, just well, to. The thing I like about knight c5 too is that bishop f3 can be met possibly by g4. Mm, that's um, tempting. We'll see. Also, we'll, okay, we'll see if she goes for that. Well, something interesting, Danny, is that white does not want to play d6. Now, that looks like the move you do want to play because it creates a further advanced pass pawn. Right. It's very easy for black to come after that pawn. So maybe yep. black. Can even play rook c2 and just ignore that whole configuration over there on the king side. Yeah, good point. Um, I think we'd be more likely to see Hikaru take on e6 and try for something with the with the two rooks being open and the bishop. Try to simplify, but I, okay, even rook e8, it makes sense. I mean, at this point, I think that she points out what you said, which is that d6 is really not a threat, right? Because that pawn would be so weak. Um, yeah, you just ignore it and pick it. Well, you just put your piece, rook on d8, and then you can go after it. It's, uh... Yeah, so she makes a trade. King is still safe. Now it's time to go to work. Go get the a-pawn or something close to it. Okay, rook e7, prophylaxis. The biggest worry you have here, again, is on the clock, but this position is straightforward enough that it, it, that shouldn't be as much of an issue. Danny, it's uh, I agree with you, but I'm also like interested in the Twitch chat because yeah. I'm being compared to all these random comedians. Mm -hmm. I have Dimitri, uh, I was about to say Dimitri Schneider because it's a chess player. Dimitri Martin, Kyle Mooney. Like I, I don't know what's going on here, but somehow I'm reminding people of uh, various comedians today. By the way, I like Dimitri Martin. This is a book. Was a very funny book that I read a while back. So Dimitri Martin's great. Yeah. Uh, agreed. But chess, I love Black's position here. Yifan can just go, well, many different good moves. Yeah, King F6 followed by Knight E6 is perfectly reasonable. Rook E6 actually made just trading the rooks off. Uh, 
play rook a3 here to keep that rook tied down to the second rank. Agreed. Yeah, this should be pretty straightforward, but again, you start looking at time on the clock, and uh, and uh, you wonder why and what she's thinking about. And again, a lot of it is just habit. That's part of the advantage of being an online blitz uh, aficionado that Hikaru is, right? He just doesn't spend time on moves that he doesn't need to spend time on, right? And I think that chess players are, are patient and disciplined uh, by nature, right? And so... If you don't play a lot of online blitz where you where you don't always need to be as patient or double triple check things you really just need to trust your intuition i think it's hard sometimes for players who don't play a lot online to break that habit robert and it's one of the things that they have that makes them a good chess player right they're right. they're they're thorough they they uh, you know they really check things and and they really want to calculate and be sure but sometimes because what what was she thinking about on rook a3 not anything worth 20 seconds right no, she's being like a bit too fastidious with her decision making. She's, did you just say you know, fastidious? I did. That is a word that is way too advanced for this show. Okay, well I'll tone it down <laughs> a notch. But you know, oh, rook d two here is just winning. I was going to say, just because your mom's watching doesn't mean you need to impress her with the vocab. <laughs> uh, I don't need to do anything to impress my mom. She loves me no matter what, Danny. Oh well, yeah. yeah, you're right. The a six, uh, play a six, a six and b five, and do it quickly. A6 and, F2 and B5. And A2 are all hanging. Take everything. Chessbay94 says fastidiousness is a great word. Thank you, Chessbay. All right. She uh, got her second pawn. She still has B5 coming. I get a feeling we're about to see our first E5 win. Hikaru removes the headphone for a second. He's. Uh, going into thought here about how to make this as, as uh, interesting as possible, but he's just down two pawns. Yep. And so what's he going to do? He's going to play h4, hoping that she takes on h4 and he can play rook f4 check. I'm, at least I'm assuming that's sort of a Hikaru. Ooh, nice move, rook c2, just trading off. Well, actually, so you trade off on c6. Yeah, but then he gets the a6 pawn. This has become... But then my king just darts from e5, d4, c3, and that should be enough for a win. Yeah, this is this is a winning endgame. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. The king and also very comes easy in, to play helps the five. pawn advance. Yeah, the rook could even just go to f6 and hold everything. f7, the f file, which, by the way, prevents the white king from rushing in. And, uh, and this king's just going to come over here and queen, so... Okay, so king d4. Probably we have to see f3 and the king try to come around as much as defense is not in Hikaru's nature. Um, I think he's going to have to play some here. Well, he she has plenty of time in this game. So actually she's doing well on the clock and with that pass b pawn just rolling, this should be pretty simple. Okay, why that move? I would have played king c4 immediately. I think she's just being patient. Yeah, so rook c5 then push that b pawn. The Oops. f7 pawn is not important because um, you take that pawn, you're still not creating a pass pawn with my yeah. And two white G just pawns there. doesn't have enough time to win f7 and g6 and get anything else going here. So um, should be pretty straightforward here for our first victory for the underdog. Yeah, no, it's a and a good win at that. It seems like she stole that e5 pawn very quickly, and now it's very simple conversion. Okay, so b2. b2, the rook comes to b6, white plays rook, black plays rook c4, which threatens rook b4, and that's going to force the sacrifice on b2, and uh, and black wins easily, everybody. So I'm not exactly sure what she's thinking about. Obviously, there are outside shots that white sacrifices the f-pawn and then creates an outside passer, but there's just not enough time. Okay, king c2 also does the trick. I'm not sure if it was any better than rook c4 to try to well, block, I but... I think rook c4 was better because white could have went f4 earlier, it looked like. Instead of king g3, just play yeah, f4 immediately. That was another purpose of the rook being on the fourth rank was to prevent Wait, this is not winning. Just... Is it? Is it winning? So if g6? No, g6 is not winning. King e3. You're king... kidding me. I don't think this is winning. The king doesn't get back in time. 
King e3, g7, rook c8. No, no. Okay, king, 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 king e3, g7. I have rook c1. Okay, then I go king h5 or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. And Hikaru knows it too. Hikaru is uh, it's happy about it. Yeah, this is this is uh, a good instructive point that very often the only way you can really win these endings, you have to get your king back in the straightest possible path. So um, this whole idea with king c2 and queening where she ended up taking on b1 with the king is what lost her the game. Rook c4, yep. as we were highlighting. Yep. You need the king to come back as quickly yep. as possible in these kind of end games. Rook c4 would have been a big difference. It would have forced rook b2, everybody. And after king takes, the uh, the black king is is essentially two squares faster to getting back because anything that goes to, to the d3 square is not nearly as good as d4. Again, if you're evaluating those end games, a good instructive takeaway is you have to find the fastest path back for the king. Uh, often people focus on the rook and think I need my rook behind the pawns. Is that usually the rook has nothing to do with whether you'll win. You have to get your king back as fast as possible. Yep. Um, wow. Gives us yep. some instructive things to offer to the fans in the chat, but a heartbreaking non-victory there for Ifan. Yeah, that's uh, that's tough. And it's funny breathe, though. Robert, that breathe. Breathe, Robert. It's funny though that Nakamura has lost rating points despite being a four and a half half right now. And yep. that's just what happens when Ifan's rating is so much lower on chess.com. It's uh, going to be a huge, like I said before the start of the match, Naka is going to lose rating points throughout this match, even if he wins by a ton. Yep. Well, they are uh, both both focused here. Shifted, shifted off camera slightly. That's what happens. <laughs> I feel like it's the running joke. I try, Robert, you're with me before these shows start. I work so hard to try to see what things are going to look like on camera, ask them to move around, and it's always in an unpredictable position that they end up in. And they really tell you so many times, I promise you I'm going to stay in this position. Yep. I'm not going to move. This, why would I move this way when I'm focused? This, and this isn't quite as bad as the as the Fabi forehead fro, which led to our Photoshop contest, but, you know, I don't think we've seen Hikaru's mouth all game, and we lost <laughs> we lost sight of Ifan's right eye. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this position, speaking of losing sight, Nakamura <laughs> has, no, he, he kind of, he does this thing where he knows he's getting himself in bad positions right. for the sake of just getting a position. But right now, look at the king side. There are no black pieces that are even near that king. No, I, and made me think that, was there a Greek gift? There wasn't a bishop takes h7 tactic there, everybody, because in the end, black has bishop f5 to guard h7. Um, yes. But... But Robert's right, and whenever you have a position with no minor pieces protecting the king, you have to start looking at forceful ways to break open the structure, uh, because usually the mating net is is not far behind. A4 um, is a good move. Yeah. You can't take on C4, because queen D3 hits both the H7 square and C4. Yep. So queen D3 now looks great. Highlight that for everybody here. That would have been a another fork. Um, also, oops, ooh. she goes for it. Oh, queen D1 check. Pick I wanted it. I wanted Queen. the tactics. Here she does it for slightly different reasons than my mating net, but I'm glad I got what I wanted. And she should get a victory here. This one should be a victory. Not so easy yet, because the situation with the pawn at c4, bishop f5 coming at some point, you mean to make sure that you don't allow some bishop d3, but no, this is clearly amazing for white. She has plenty of time in the clock. Now you have to go g5 for black and hope that by creating more weaknesses, you're not just getting crushed. Oh, this is this is not good. Yeah, no, she's uh, she's on pace to get this one here. So where to put the bishop? I want to take on d6 and and just get a million pawns. Take on d6, f5, but there's no reason for me to to do any kind of sacrifice. Plenty. Yeah, you're going you're going crazy over there. Yeah, not necessary, right? Just back up the bishop to even h2. I mean, I wonder if... Okay, she goes to d2, which makes sense, because it prevents f5, everyone, now that two pieces are hitting the g-pawn. Black can't afford to push, but... But I feel like this should be pretty straightforward for white. The rook on a6 is completely out of play. Um, white is already very quickly going to be bringing heat to the e-file, and I would even do so at the risk of the A-pawn falling, honestly. Although maybe not, I guess, because if the A-pawn falls, the C-4-pawn is not far after. So that's a problem. 
Yeah, I would do it though. I'm all you about that. Anyway. Yeah, there's also. So yeah, that move makes sense now. If Hikaru traded, she could undouble her C pawns, play C4, and have a new, a new target on A5. Yeah, this is great. That's a good move. Then she can bring the rooks to the E file next. So I'd go queen c7 is black and just, or okay, queen d8, same idea that this queen can get in trouble with rook b6 being a threat. So queen b2 back. And now you can just play rook ae1 here because I think after queen takes a4, you can play queen b5 then. Sort of a funny looking maneuver, but mm -hmm. your, queen, your queen gets forced out of play. Please do not repeat moves here. I'd be very sad. No. No, e -fon. No, e -fon. No. He's shaking his head because... He's surprised. I think she, at this point, was happy just to get something on the board, but that was definitely a misevaluation. I loved your rook AE1 idea, although it was my idea first, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> it was your idea, but that's we, we use each other to become yeah, a better that's team. Right. Me and you together, one plus one equals five. Yeah, it's like that Mikhail Tall quote, right? That's not just because I dropped out of high school, the one plus one equals five. <laughs> The, the tall quote, right? I'm going to take my opponent into a deep, dark forest where 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's right. I was like, and there's only one way out. You know? <laughs> so it's like, come on, tall. Yeah. Um, okay, so Naka repeating some strange-looking openings. But not that strange. It's a pretty normal setup, actually, in, in this one. Yeah, but that, that, that's a disappointing one there. I mean, it's one that you're not going, you're not going to get many chances to push there and, um, against Hikaru. But uh, but she had one there, so and I, and I think from a principled perspective, when he plays dubious openings that we know Hikaru can do from time to time, um, I think you really have to try hard to uh, to get those wins because now now we're in much more of a mainline structure. King's Indian yep. attack, White's playing for f4. Actually, uh, Hikaru won a really nice game on the black side of the structure. A similar structure against Federico Perez Ponce. I annotated that game for my chess life column, so I, you know, yeah. I'm very familiar with it. And he played on the black side of a position like this, and he won a really nice game. And what he, the, the thing what Black would love to do, is trade off um, the the two bishops and one of the knights for White's two knights and the dark scored bishop. Leave no, now you don't want to do it, but before f5 was played, leave White with his light scored bishop. Now by this uh, exchange happening, the Lester Bishop is actually a good piece because there's no pawn e4 blocking its path. And now from black, you have to worry about any any time like an f takes e5, knight f4 sort of thing happening. The good news is this bishop on c1 is kind of stuck there for the time being. And um, you know, you're going to have to move your knight from d2 and from e2 to really make progress. But h4, idea being knight g3, maybe your knight or pawn can go to h5. and. I'm starting to like Hikaru's position more and more. So it's um, yep, looking pretty solid. And here we see Ifan is probably going to spend some time. <sighs> What's she going to do here? Queen e8 stops the pawn from going to h5, but I don't really love my queen on the e8 square. But let's see, what is she? So she went queen e8. And... <sighs> My reaction is, how do I get a piece, a rook to e1? But I don't know if I love my playing rook e1 for white. That seems very strange, though, because the queen will just go into h5, and the h4 pawn is weak. So you have to do something about the threat queen h5, trying to win the h4 pawn. So maybe just knight g3 now. And, um, yeah. Well, knight g3 may pawn takes f4. Huh. And then knight h5. Yeah, maybe just knight g3. It was played. Knight h5 is going to be really, really annoying here to deal with. I think that um, and just knight h5 happened. Black is up a pawn temporarily, but you're not going to keep it. Bishop e5 isn't just... Maybe she does want to keep it. Well, she's not keeping it for long. Knight b3 hits the c5 pawn. If you play b6 as black, you're going to run right into rook e1. And that might just cost you a piece, honestly. So king h8 played. So c5 is a free pawn, no? Yeah. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Seems like b6 was the the best option there. This isn't good. This is really not good for Yifan. 
Yep. In fact, it's almost a resignable position. It's weird to say that when material there's so is many pieces enough. on the board. I agree, but no, it's there's almost no moves here. Just rookie with, one. With every move, White's advantage is increasing. Um, and, and rookie one might just win a piece because yep. if you move your queen off the e file, at bishop Take takes c six, rook yep. takes e five. And you're threatening to do something similar to it right now. If you move the knight away from, from c6, white can take on d7 and then take e5 immediately. So I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see <laughs> uh, Grishik makes a, uh, a very interesting comment. We thank, we thank Sasha for being here, hanging out in chess.com. But uh, <laughs> he, was, he was very critical of, of Ifon's draw in the last game. So... Yeah, I can't, can't blame him. But love to see Grishuk in the chat. Um, obviously an incredibly strong player, and he'll be playing soon enough against Jan Nipomnici. So. That's right. So knight f7. Just play rookie seven, right? Just keep your rook on the board. Rookie what, seven, what? the knight's coming into f6. We may have a fancy schmancy mate over here yep. on h7. Let's see. Okay, King, King F2. To F2. Nice, everybody. Of course, the rook is not worth capturing at all. The dark squares will be a serious problem. Um, but white, white is of a piece, right? Just a full piece? Yeah. A full piece. That is, Sad. That is what they say. Sad news. Taking on C2 to trade queens, white will take F3, and again... Taking e5, not only is it not enough material, because then white has two pieces for the rook, um, probably the mating net is, is still pretty strong here on the dark squares. Queen takes c2, no, okay. Trades and then takes, but still. Knight f6 so check and bishop takes d4. That works. Knight f6 check take h7 was also a nice new pass pawn over there. So Interesting move, knight f4. Just to protect d3, I guess. Needs to play h5, g6, yep. rook g1, stuff okay. like that. Okay. Or grab the c file and uh, do things the old fashioned way over here on g7. Yep. Bishop takes d4 now. Free pawns, bishop f6, d3 is protected. Yep. Uh, resign time. No? Still playing? Not yet. Here comes the rook. Rook c7. Or not. I mean, knight e6 is just... I guess knight e6 is just as good. Maybe not. I don't know, actually. Yeah, knight d4, now rook c7. Just make sure the rook can't block you in the seventh rank. This is painful. Rook c7. Do it. Rook there c7. It Probably enough for Yvonne to throw in the towel here and a two-minute time advantage to go with it. Yeah, it's tough, man. Feels bad, man. It's tough, man. Although, I'm going to go out on a limb and say there will be no adoption today. So I'll say that. I think Yvonne has obviously kind of reset, reset the potential adoption with the last couple draws that maybe could have been wins. But I'm going to say that that doesn't happen today. You want to take me up on that? You think it does happen in Bullet, maybe? Could potentially happen in Bullet. I don't really see it happening, but I also am not sure I see Ifan getting more than four points. That, that was my threshold, honestly, it was her getting four points because Hikaru is just so strong, so fast. He's a favorite in the overall tournament, but yep. in, these, in these segments he's been showing that even if he gets shaky positions, he's so quick that it'll make his opponent nervous. She'll uh, agree to draws and... Well, nearly winning positions uh, just to stop the bleeding. So, Yeah, which is tough, right? It's tough, and um, obviously it's definitely, I think we, sh we deserve, or she deserves us to be critical of that, but it's also, um, I think, trying to get some momentum back in her favor. Here, Hikaru is trying to uh, maybe left. take care of something else. I don't know. Um, <laughs> he's, he's stepped away for the moment, looks like. Shout out to uh, Jack Jack Z who just gifted a sub. 
the second gifted sub on our channel. Thanks to everybody who's here, all 3,500 of you on chess.com TV and twitch.tv slash chess. And in the chess.com chat, if you want to go and log in and, and see, uh, see Grishuk, you should go ahead and do that. What is that? What are we seeing in the reflection on Nakamura's camera there? What tower is that? I've never been to Canada, so. That's, uh, that's where the aliens land. <laughs> yep. I, I was genuinely curious, but now. Uh, it's, it looks I'm, like it's just a water tower. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious, maybe. I'm not trying to pop your bubble about things that aren't as impressive as you think they are, but, you know. It, it reminds you of Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hikaru is back. And Robert has muted himself because of the car alarms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw an ambulance. I could see the lights of an ambulance about to go through, so I muted myself just so everyone else didn't have to hear that. One day we're going to move you to a safe place, Robert. I feel like I'm in a very safe place. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I was told by our handyman, Pete, that's Harbor Center Tower in Vancouver. Oh, okay. There you go. Pete, coming through even before Statman could. I'm surprised. Mike, Mike should be feeling ashamed right now. That's okay. usually Mike Klein's thing. I'm disappointed in him. I'm disappointed in, in uh, Stat Boy right now but proud of Pete. Um, one of the best things about when Grishik is online is he often plays Guess the Move, likes himself, <laughs> some Guess the Move. But our last Guess the Move title player was Justice Bot Fan, so uh, that's not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that may indicate some poor chess being played or just... Some... Uh, yeah. Um, all right, bishop to c2, I like it. Bring the bishop to b3, d5 is a weakness. Maybe I can take on f4. Right, so here's, again, partly due to the whatever the whatever the services that Hikaru needed to attend to when he disappeared for a minute. Um, but regardless of what that was, uh, he is down more than a minute on the clock here, and so we have a rare, a rare uh, situation. Yeah, we don't see that very often in his... Position isn't terrible, but I also don't tend to love these structures for black. You have this e6 pawn that's backward, uh, rook e1, rook c1 from white. We're in a we're just like in a French right now. Um, yep. So French you, know, you know how we feel about the French, but this is so, one of those rare Frenches where we might be okay with black. Yeah. No, I, I definitely feel okay here. Yep. Uh, because Mainly because the d pawn is just as much of a weakness as anything on e6, and with the open f file. Black has decent looking counterplay. Yeah, G five. I don't like that move. Yeah, I, I understand the I was, intention. But yeah, I, I expected ninety five two. Wait, that was a blunder. I think by both. Why? Couldn't Black have taken? Oh no, never mind. No, there was no I, fork on E two because the knight. Yeah, there's no, I, was, I was trying to go Bishop A six as well, but the knight still is on C three, so <laughs> it doesn't change. <laughs> right there. Um, so. Okay, so wow. c5, perhaps just rook e1 here. Yeah, she, I've highlighted her last two moves before she played it. Maybe maybe if I keep highlighting her moves, she'll play fast. Um, maybe. No, but She's I like, like rook e1. Mainly because there is no threat of taking e5 and then a fork on d4, everybody, because white can take f4. Um, oh, maybe Hikaru's going to go for it, but if, but if she takes f4... Oh, look at this. Well, I saw that coming, but I'm not sure... I how much I quite love it because King G2 D4 Knight E4 comes in uh -huh. and then Knight is jumping into F6. Yeah, and if Bishop to B7 pinning the Knight, I move my Bishop away and my Rook protects the E4 right? square. I was going to say you even have moves like Queen G4, but yeah, I think just moving the Bishop, keeping the piece would make sense. So this feels a little suspect. Yep, she, she played King G2. Is Hikaru going for some sort of long-term peace sack with bishop b7? No, this is has to be the only option he had, and all of a sudden he 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 gives his WTF Hikaru eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you take on e3, I guess play knight f6 check, right? That seems pretty straightforward, and at the very least, my knight is planted on a dark square where you can't yep. kick it out. So knight yep. f6 check, 
king g7 and maybe i play queen c2 there just go for checkmate yeah or, or queen f3 actually hitting the rook on a8 it's also a possibility i'm not sure i, I could think about just playing rook takes e3 i have so many good options for white yeah yeah this looks great for ifan so play knight f6 check what's wrong with that Maybe she's considering keeping the knight on e4 for some reason to hit the g5 pawn, but I mean, knight f6 check just looks... You can't take it on f6, so your queen's hanging on d8. Yeah, what is she thinking about? We'll get one of those moments yep. where you just have to make your move. You have to make your move because there's just nothing better to do, right? And you just, again, um, it's hard, again, because some of these attributes, whoa, she brings the knight to a different direction. Or would make them strong chess players, but still, blitz and rapid really challenge the um, the parts of us that don't trust our intuition. Because you can keep saying you're in a good position, but time is part of the game. So if you lose because you mismanaged time earlier in the game, then it's you know it's still a loss. Right. Um, so what's going on now? It looks like all of a sudden the knight's on d6, which is still very strong. Black is up a pawn and also up 20 seconds on the clock. So, hmm. The 96 can't be dislodged. That's the really good news. So rook AC1. Yeah, I was she gonna played. say, she can choose between rook C1 or rook G1. She went with the C rook first, which I think makes sense, but this should be straightforward. And sh whoa, why would she take on B7 and go to the rook ending? Well, but there's some rook F8 check to go to F3. So she took off this bishop so that rook can infiltrate but now all of a sudden again black is looking to get these counter chances yeah it feels like the rook may come to f3 anyway now if the rooks double on the f file and that it's just surprising to me that uh, we would so quickly part with such a beast on d6 um i think we're gonna get separated pawns here so rook c6 to go after the e pawn blacking over rook f3 check take the h pawn mm -hmm. oh, oh boy Something tells me that uh, Black has a lot, a lot more drawing chances now than he would have before, um, and maybe Black isn't even any, any, even really worse anymore, despite being down upon here because of this threat of Rook F3 being so strong. Okay, she stops it, Rook G3. Now she can swing back to the A file, where she hits both A7 and then maybe goes to A6 to hit E6. It's okay. I guess White is still. Wait, why is that even up a pawn? What am I talking about? No, well, I, I was I was silently sitting here because I was trying to do a quick count of the material. <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking about. Always challenge me. Um, I I I was uh, under this impression that when when she won the c5 pawn that it was an extra pawn, but of course it's not. In fact, black is totally fine here. E5 is a much easier pawn to target than anything else. So. Yeah, so, no, so. the king on d4 looks good, but it also is going to become a victim to these rook attacks very quickly. And the e5 pawn now looks like it's falling. Yep. And this looks like Hikaru's game. So let's see. The, you go, don't want to go king takes e5 because you hang the g pawn. So rook g7 makes perfect sense. I thought rook d7 was an alternative to go to d5 with check, but I, I like this rook behind the g pawn. You might as well get it there. Play G4, play Rook F3, and just keep pushing that G pawn home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the advantage is only increasing here for Black. So, another one that slipped away here for E Fawn. Yeah. Shout out to our two our two biggest supporters of the Twitch TV Chess Channel, Chess Bay ninety four and Kitty Kitty. Thank you for all the gifted subs over there. I see you. So let's see, is there any chance here for white to hold? I mean, G3 now, just keep pushing that G pawn, mentioning it. And it's good technique by Hikaru because the pawn E5 could have been captured at any moment. Instead, he's leaving that there. He said, I'll pick that up when I want. And now the threat, of course, is G2 followed by rook F1. So move like king B5 to get the rook, king out of the way of the rook. So if G2 and rook D6, similar premise, that if G2, I now have rook D2. Mm -hmm. In order to keep that G pawn, you have to put your rook on F3 to G3 which means that you can't actually really make progress with your rooks. 
So it's going to be the first time scramble we've seen, though, in this match. We've seen Yvonne really under time pressure, but this this could be one of our first mutual time pressure moments coming up here. Yep. And so Rook C3, so now King B5. Okay, she went back to D4 to keep the pawn protected, but she'll go back to C5. What? what this is not a drawn position. I'm so, sh there's no way Nakamura will agree to a draw here. I, I'd, I'd be, be shocked, right? I mean, certainly Black has to be the only one who can win still with this pawn being so much farther advanced. Perhaps Rook, I was going to say, Rook C2 or Rook B3, keep the pressure on the queen side over here. Um, so King C, okay, I thought King C4 first, but Rook G1, you must. You cannot G1. trade Rooks here with the Rook on the King will come pawn. to F3 where it's, oh, I thought it would go to F3 where it was shielded, but King. now... What's going on here? I can't tell. Rook of eight check? No, it doesn't no, work. Rook I thought check. I... But there may have been Rook of eight and then Rook takes G3, Robert. Oh, I, th I think there might have been. Oh, but then Rook C2 check was in the air. What's going on here? Who's queening first? Oh, the e pawn just hangs. Not good. Okay, but he... he uh... Ah, he can defend it. Oh, why give check? Checks yeah, this are, is not good. Checks are no bueno. She's living on the increment. Literally one second, three seconds now. But she may have good drawing chances. At this point, even if she if she wins the A-pawn, she may be in a position where she can even give up her rook at some point and still be able to draw. Right. But she's going to get flagged, I think. I just don't trust her, yeah. her mouse skills here. Especially with this black king encroaching over here. You can never take on A6 because rook F1 comes immediately. So you have to... Yeah, not, well, not she plays rook... tickle long enough, though, to back the king up. Maybe she should have been able... Okay. It... She's really playing very well here. Yeah, to hold on to. I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed with her, uh, with her time scrambling skills right now. Given, uh oh, given that we haven't no. seen that yet, but it does eventually catch up with her, trying to defend this position with really only time on the increment. So uh, Hikaru does finally get it. That was crazy. That was a tough game. Yeah, that was not, not just super, super easy or straightforward. Well defended there for a long time by Yvonne. I mean, just all these checks, no time, couldn't even keep up, really. But it looked like Ifan was defending extremely well, but of course, Ikaru was up a pass pawn, and that seemed to just be enough for him to pull through for victory. E-Dog, our resident keep track of all potential adoptions um, counter. We appreciate that. <laughs> Ikaru on two out of ten. Again, I've said I don't think it's happening this time. So, um, But uh, anyway. Thank you all, nearly 3,800 of you that are here. We still have more than half the match uh, to go for those who, uh, who maybe just got here. Even though the score is currently greatly favoring the top seed, as was sort of expected, some super interesting and instructive moments in a few of the games we've had. Sorry for the Yoda speak there. Sometimes you go Yoda <laughs> by accident. You know? I, I approve, honestly. You know, Six minutes, we will have our first quick break. And then we move to the faster time controls. So uh, don't go anywhere, everybody. So seven to one right now. I mean, Ifan had some very good chances in plenty of these games here, but only one point to show for it. Yep. Hikaru down about eight rating points since when we started. He's losing a ton of rating for every draw. And well, the match is going his way in terms of results, but you know, I don't know. He's playing this sort of risky chess. Yep. Well, now with the white pieces, this is the opposite of risky chess. His position looks excellent here. He has more space. He has control over the long diagonal. He can play simple moves. So he went f4 first. That looks very good. He can play bishop f3. Yep, he plays bishop f3. You can't go c6 as black because your d6 pawn immediately becomes extremely weak and you're going to lose it. If you take on d5 now with the bishop, I'll play c takes d5 and you have a backward C pawn. Because if I take with the bishop on D5, which also looks good, then I think black can um, just play against this bishop on the light squares. If I take with the C pawn, now as mentioned, rook just can bring the rook to C1, keep pressurizing that C7 square and hope that you'll outlast black's defenses. Well said, partner. Like, were you, did you black out during that? That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I see this backward pawn. It can yep. never be pushed because the bishop on f3 covers the squares. Yep. And I think, can I go g4? Well, I can go g4 now. There it yeah, is. Yeah, that's a very nice move. Again, well-timed because the knight is pinned to the king. Yep. I was wrong. And it's not always a rook that pins. So I have a 
I think the only thing that potentially keeps black alive is let's say I go pawn takes g4. You take with the bishop. It lo looks like I'm losing c7, but if I can go c5, an in-between move, and now when you take on c6, I take back with my rook because your bishop is no longer an f3, preventing my rook from doing so. I think she's going for this. I don't see any other. Yep, there's c5. Really nice tactical shot. Yeah. Uh, hit, hitting the queen on d4. Hey, Caro, with the WTF eyebrows. There you go. <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, it, it was one of those things where, what is it? Um, necessity breeds genius, right? When you're, yep. in a, when you're in a spot where the only option for Yvonne was to come up with this idea of taking and playing c5, she was able to find the, the very nice swindle. Yeah, and I have no idea. I mean, I don't have an engine up, but I think that white should still be quite a bit better because the bishop is very strong. But at the same time, the king is open now that you play g4. So moves mm -hmm. like queen e6 to h3 come to mind or even playing d5 at some point. I don't want to do that quite yet, but at some point playing d5 because if you take a little rook d7 to pin your bishop. So queen e6 played. And I really like that move, just going over to the h3 square. Mm -hmm. And so now... Yeah, Icaro prepares to defend it but now now i like your now I, I liked your d5 move there i think rookie seven makes sense as well to hit e3 but um d5 makes sense even it even made sense when it was a pawn sacrifice as you said but if, if you did it it would have made the e pawn backward on e3 and actually opened up the e4 square for the knight so maybe she should have played d5 instead of rookie seven so king g8 yeah no i, I thought d5 was an option you're right, before rookie 7, d5 would look really good. And here, so the queen wants to go to h3, but I am giving up knight and f6. But I think I can get away with it. So queen h3, mm -hmm. you take on f6, I take on f3. So we're just attacking each other's rooks. And both kings are very unsafe. Or, or, well, not unsafe. There's not many pieces attacking, but both kings are very open. So it looks like that they are very good drawing chances. Yeah, and this would be a draw that we would not be... Uh be too critical of Yvonne for for taking if she decided to to go for that she's down more than a minute on the clock not the worst time pressure or time difference she's been in but still you start to look at that and and uh and worry about the direction of the game for black yeah anytime i see her start her clock ticking oh no came back to g7 well i guess it's not so bad but okay but now e5 you... looks strong yeah, the fact that you went king g8 and then back to g7 does not exactly yeah. lead me to believe that you're confident in your position. No, but, I mean the last two moves, e4, king g8, rookie 2, king g7. <laughs> but Here's sometimes a... it's important to be able to admit your mistakes, and actually that is a sign of a very strong player, is if you realize the plan you're going for does not work out, to kind of have off. to have the courage to change your mind mid-move to say, you know what, I, I, I can admit when I, I do something wrong. Yep. I think that's, it's it honestly is courageous because it's, we're so likely to just keep on going to fail to consider that, well, admitting you're wrong is not the end of the world. So mm -hmm. just just food for thought. No, I agree. And now it may pay off because one of the reasons she didn't like her king on g8, everybody, was because in those cases, the bishop on this diagonal, perhaps pinning the queen on e6 in different lines, was, was really a problem. But it's not a problem anymore. So she can unpin the knight on e5. Material remains equal. And I think... Uh, as you said, Robert, she made the right call that the king was much worse on the light squares than it was originally on g7. Though she still should yeah. have played my d5 move. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And, you know, now we've gotten to a position where white, if the queens get traded, white's trying to make use of this outside pass pawn on the queen side, right? Mm -hmm. Play a4, b4, b5, yep. and use the fact that a bishop on g2 is so powerful. But in the current position, Black has firm control over the king side. The king on g7 actually looks quite safe. Mm -hmm. you can, can you play rook d7 here? Does that work? And this is one of those positions where I know she hasn't gotten a win yet, and maybe I've jinxed her once or twice, but I think it was coming. But this is one that I, I wonder if it could turn quickly, because when you have this potentially open king here for white, and we know how dangerous the queen and knight can be together as attackers, if she found some way to get the queen and knight coordinated over here on the king side, Robert, it would be very dangerous for Hikaru. Yeah. yeah, I like and it. I like h5 because maybe maybe h4 comes in. Maybe she, yeah, queen g5, again h4 h3 maybe coming. Um, note so that king seven, note, right? Get that king out of the way, maybe to start with. There right, it is. And, and note that after queen g5, a move like queen d2 offering queen trade was not possible because of knight g, knight f3 forking. I think Akaro just saw that and decided to move to safety. But here comes the knight. 
I I know I've jinxed it before, but somehow I feel like this is going to be one of the ones that turns the opposite way, and Hikaru kind of shaking his head right now. Yeah, I love Black's position, and I kept trying to make moves like Rook D7 or C7 work because the White King is in the back rank with any luck. So yeah. there, might, there might have been options there. Now just Knight takes B4 as a free pawn. She yep. took it. And, well, Black is clearly in the driver's seat. Yeah, and it's not as ideal as a mating yet, maybe, as far as the Queen and Knight working together. And so I think that's why Hikaru was kind of kind of like, well, you know, this, this made me not as bad as it could have been. But, but certainly Ifon should not lose this. Yeah, but we have said that before. So unfortunately, just knows, because man. it looks like she shouldn't lose doesn't mean that she won't. And, you know, nobody should take that as a sign of her being... Uh, yeah, that's you know, not necessarily not a slam a on her. It's more of a testament to what Hikaru Nakamura is capable of in these settings yep. so okay but the pawn on h4 could be a nice target right now she's got to be considering whether she can just go gobble a5 right and, and avoid a perpetual but queen takes a5 the queen comes into d7 okay we're gonna find out it looks like a draw just queen d7 like, yeah she's she's trying for it oh i like king f6 yeah i i, I like it too be aggressive b e a g g Oh, you can't go king f5, I guess. There's Bishop h3, uh, is that it? Yeah, bishop h3 will turn the tables probably. But maybe you can. There's runner king to e4. I would do and it. You're, you're down so many points that you might as well. So they're repeating back and forth. This is the last game of the five-minute portion uh, with the one-second increment. A reminder, yeah. you know, there's a five-minute portion with the one-second increment, then a three-minute portion with the one-second increment, and then a one-minute portion with a one second increment. So we are ending the longest time control. And this will only increase Hikaru's advantage. Well, okay, three minute, I think, is relatively similar. But when we get to the bullet, we'll see Hikaru just go into uh, full beast mode. He'll turn into the Hulk on yep. camera for us. Which it seems sort of dangerous to, to give a man like that Red Bull, but apparently they did it, you know? So. You, you know, should have seen him Hikaru back in the Red day. Bull would not have been. It would have been like, hey, what do you think Hikaru needs more of? I wouldn't have said Red Bull, but you know, each his own. Um, all right. Well, Bishop comes to e4, and as we said, Ifon Ifon shouldn't lose this, but it doesn't mean that she won't. Now she's under time pressure, and um, okay, I got to think Queen to b5 makes sense. You guard d7, and you should just be fine. But. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I think both players are playing for a win in a way in this yeah. game. Yeah. I think uh, Ifan is now concerned about her king safety, so she's been running back and forth. You know, she doesn't really have the option to play for a win. She's sort of playing not to lose. But yep. King e7 here now, Bishop g6 and like Queen c6 check, picking up that Bishop on g6. In the very least, you enter an end game where you're up a Queen and two pawns is Queen and one pawn. So this is yep. a big turning point actually because Queen e3 here. Is probably met by queen e5. The old can just pin the bishop and just m maneuver your king on the dark squares. So queen e5 here makes a lot of sense to me. King d6 also give up. I, the I, I really like king d6. And one of the funny things about these types of queen endings, everybody, is at some point, usually the way to win, you have to be willing to bring your king into the fray and, and know that, yes, there will be a bunch of checks, maybe even 10 or 15. But if there is safety, probably at some point for that black king over on the queen side protected by the queen in the knight. And if you can find it, then you can get back to doing what you want to do, which is push your past pawns. Yep. So, so I, bishop takes g6 check, picks king, up a pawn, king, king f6. f6. And then we'll the probably good, see the draw finally. Yeah, queen takes e7, bishop takes h5. Okay, nope. now king g7. Black can play for win. Hikaru, Hikaru may push this one past, uh, past the point of no return if he's not careful, because now h4 and the bishop are under fire. And for yep. the first time, Hikaru might be under 10 seconds in the match. And I'm not worried about him flagging, but I am worried. Queen h4 check, take on h5. Queen g5 check, maybe throw that in Queen first. Queen g5 first. Yeah, I Cause, agree. Because you can go, okay, it's just a draw. King f1, queen f6 check. That, you know, that's a, a draw, but queen takes h5, queen takes b4. And the king just runs to the a1 square. This is a very simple draw for him. Yeah, but could she have played queen d1 and then queen d3? I'm not so sure that that was just an easy draw. I think we're going to get that way. But queen d1 check and then queen d3, Robert, keeps that white king off the potential to run over, and then you can just run your king up. No, but I can offer a trade of queens because in the end game with the Ah, the king is within the box. Yep. There you go. And, and just like we're seeing now, everybody, when we say the king is within the box, that means this. When you look at this position, if you can draw a line from the queening square 
to where your king is and it's a perfect box. That is a quick way to know that your king will catch their pawn. In case you didn't know that about king and pawn endings, you're welcome. And uh, in case you didn't know that the speech chess championship rolls on, that's exactly what we're going to be doing for the next 90 minutes. We're going to take our first quick break right wait, now. Wait, she resigned? What? It says she resigned. She meant to click draw, I think. Oh my gosh. She resigned and she actually didn't know. It's okay. Uh, take a take a break. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I don't I don't think Akaro's going to hold it against you, so take a break yeah. and we'll figure it out. <laughs> Um, she's looking at us on camera like, wait, no, Danny. <laughs> uh, we'll figure it out. Either way, we're going to take a quick break there. Um, I don't even know that Hikaru would mind calling that one a draw. But either way, I'm not going to nitpick too much about the scoreboard right now. We'll be right back with the three-minute portion. Well, uh, well, there's a little bit of thought about a little bit of discussion going on right now about the situation with the resignation, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I believe the score, um, the score will stand based on that 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 was the result, and certainly this is an online chess tournament where things like mouse slips and uh, bad connections, and I guess sometimes accidentally pressing the resign button can count. But if we want to ask Hikaru afterwards whether he agrees it was a draw, we'll do that and uh, perhaps adjust the score later on in, in a news report. But Robert, let's focus on what matters, which is we have the three minute portion ahead of us. Ifan will be back momentarily. And uh, I'm gonna do what I normally do, which is ask you to be a coach and give her the encouragement she needs to play faster and trust her intuition more. What would you say? Yeah, I would say you're getting many good positions. So you don't have to really worry about the opening so much. It seems like her openings are well prepared. She's getting advantages with the white pieces. She's doing a good job of neutralizing with the black pieces. Yeah. The real issue is, a critical moment, she's spending way too much time. That game that sticks out to me every time is when a knight takes e5, bishop a3. We had been talking about that decision 45 seconds before she finally made it. And I know that she's an extremely strong player, and so she needs to trust herself a little more and conserve time. If you yep. conserve your time, you won't get in a bullet brawl with Hikaru, which you are pretty much certain to lose because of how good he is. So that's really where my advice would leave her. Just continue playing your good brand of chess. The results do not match the performance. So uh, you'll, your results should improve if you improve your time management. Uh, agreed 100%. And uh, right now, it uh, looks like uh, another game is going <laughs> uh, between Ray Robson and, and Yaakov N. Uh, but uh, our next three-minute game has not quite begun yet. Ifan is not back. So... Um, we will uh, be starting it as soon as soon as she returns. But I agree with you totally. And again, I know it's easier said than done when you're also playing a really strong player um, to play faster. But because the, there are so many mo moves where the moments where the move is obvious or forced or required, those extra few seconds you take always end up coming back to bite you when you do so unnecessarily. So uh, not a bad idea to get you your coaching shoes. For those who don't know, Grandmaster Robert Hess is the official coach for the U.S. Women's Olympia team. Quite the honor. And Hikaru Nakamura actually voted for Robert to be the coach of the men's team, although Robert didn't get that job this year. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, the uh, open team went with Alex Lenderman, and how could you be disappointed uh, in that also choice? Also a great when, choice, yep. When they won the gold medal at the last Olympiad with Lenderman as coach. So uh, clearly a good decision. Um, the application is the same, so I just figured I'd send my name both places. I coached the women in 2016, and I'm very honored and appreciative that they have faith in me to coach them in the 2018 Batumi Olympiad as well. So you're welcome for us putting you on the uh, on the spot there and getting you to getting you to be more in your coaching coaching mode. So a reminder, everybody, thank you so much for all those who have already donated. Uh, and helped bring the uh, the prize fund up even higher. The starting prize fund is, of course, what you see. The prize fund is now uh, at a little little bit higher. So always always appreciative of that. Want to just thank everybody for all the support, and know that all those donations go directly to the players. All right, three minute chess. It's on. Well, we see that Ifan very good position here um, with the white pieces. Strong center. There's a bishop on h8. That's entombed by the own pawns, but the good news is that you can play f5 at any moment. The bad news is that by playing f5, you give control over some of those dark squares to 
uh, to white. I would even consider the move g4 here for white. It looks very strange, but I don't want black to play f5. It clearly is the plan. So if I play g4, you're not going to play f5 yourself. The bad news is you might just play bishop g7, trade off the bishops, then lose the excuse me, use the f4 square against me in the, in the you know in the aftermath of the trade. So here's f5 coming, bishop e3. So I like black's position a lot now. The problem is this d4 pawn is going to be forever be a target. Black is threatening f4 at the right moment. Yeah, this is going in Nakamura's favor as this game continues here. Yep. Agreed. A tough one. Yeah, it's just uh, you, it's hard to even find a move here because you want to play g3 for white to stop f4, but then you see that bishop on b7 potentially opening up. And now just queen c7, ignore that knight because the d4 pawn is still a problem. And if you play knight f3, f4 actually traps your bishop on e3. So this is looking terrible for white now. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know how white saves the material here. If you move your queen away, so your queen's, so your pawn's not pinned on d4 to your queen, then black plays c5, undermining the protection of the knight on e5. Yeah, this is, I think, already losing for white, honestly. Oh, f4. Yeah, this is really tough. Ooh. For a second, I thought maybe that tactic was premature, but yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. So just... Okay, he could have played queen d6 probably to pile up pressure, but I like this. Move the bishop back to f8, put it on c5. There's uh, weaknesses on the king side. There are a lot of holes to exploit. Bishop c5 followed by queen d4 or queen d1 or something like that. Could lead to a checkmating. And now bishop e4, removing this knight away. And so many good moves here. Okay, bishop g7 makes sense. I was going to say queen d6 to a3 just to make progress in that queen. And there's queen d6. This is a, a very unfortunate position here for... Well, and also pretty unfortunate by the clock, too. And, I wasn't uh, even looking at the clock, but you're right. Two-minute advantage. Yeah, no, the, that's the biggest... Oh, and a blunder of the queen. So time was, no, was the biggest factor. Now it is no longer the biggest factor. So, another win for Ikaru. And... Hmm. So, okay, playing a normal little, starting with b3, but it turns into a, a bit of a normal structure now with yep. the pawn at c4. And white can play d4 and will play d4 in the relatively near future just to expand the center. And so oftentimes black ignores this and plays bishop g7 because if you take on e5, then there's knight g4 stuff. But by playing e4 so early, you for white, you say, I'm going to go ahead and win this pawn. And now bishop f5 for Black will come to protect that pawn on e4, but then perhaps I can always kick that bishop away. And so now, wait, what? Knight e5 here. Yeah, knight e5 tactically defends that pawn because knight e5, if you take on e4, I'll take you. You take yep. back on e4, and then I'll move my knight away, perhaps to f3 with check, and take the, the dark square bishop off the board. And I'll show that line on the board for everyone watching and curious who does. It's happening. That's exactly what's going to happen here. And okay, it's. It's still a pawn for white, uh, despite the dark square bishop falling. Um, but uh, my biggest worry about it is that, oh, she doesn't go for it, although maybe she will next, because now you could still play knight f3. Uh, no, you couldn't. Not anymore. Nope. Um, she, might play, she might play f5 here. f5, kicking the knight. And then play f4. Just keep pushing that pawn down the board. Mm hmm That would be quite a nice checkmate if something like f5, f4 happened and some sort of discovery against the king on e1, but likely not. Strange, though, yeah. right? For her to lose this pawn and then not go for something aggressively, you know, as, as compensation seems weird the way she approached this. Right? I mean, not playing for knight of three check. Um, I guess she That's still does have time based on the fact that Hikaru does have to complete his development and get the king out, right? Yeah. So, um, f5... Here comes f4. Yeah, this is actually still pretty hard for Hikaru. Yeah, he's underdeveloped. And that's the thing that is hard for many players to understand is that even when you win a pawn, 
if you your pieces can't get out, yep. the, co compensation as a concept is difficult to understand. And here, for example, Black can even play Rook A to E8, and if you take on G4, I go take with my Knight on G4, and all of my pieces are aiming at your king. Yep. So that's a possibility here. Yeah, that might be a really fun line, actually, if this something like this were to occur on the board and Black were to get a massive attack. Um, she's taking her time to think about it, decides not to, but I do believe at some point, at some point, you're going to have to be aggressive on the E file before White completes development. And yeah, I mean, if White plays Bishop E2 here, which is the idea is just to get that development down, Queen G5 happens in G2 mm -hmm. and oh, E3. Oh, very nice, this move F4, I like it. Opens up the idea of Queen H4 check along with the E file because now G3 not possible. Okay, though unfortunately after King to D1, or, or King E2 actually, there's not an immediate follow-up for Black despite White losing the right to castle. Yeah, G5, G4, I guess, you know, just go forward with an attack. But you're right, it's not, okay. it's not immediately devastating. So queen e7, why there? Well, I don't understand why you'd move your queen back. Oh, okay, she's moving her, maneuvering her bishop, but what does that do? She wants queen g7, perhaps? But, but why did you move the queen from h4 when you could have went g5, g4 right away, right? That's just, yeah. go for the attack. Well, it makes no sense, too, because now the time she lost with the queen uh, doesn't punish white at all for the time he lost with the king, and he's basically c just castled queenside and up a healthy pawn. Actually, <laughs> the uh, it's pretty funny here that neither side really got much to show for that queen h4 check. Um, positionally, black is okay despite being down the pawn, mainly because this knight is such on such a dominant square. But again, the more the game goes on here, the fact that she's already under time pressure and that the king side is going to open, you really start to like you really start to like white here. Yep, and so also I'm. Instead of c6, I wanted to play g4 for black because I'm worried if white plays g4 at some point, okay, or h4 was played, now yep. it's getting really messy on the side of the board. Yep. And h4 now, even you can play h5 for white, like right now, and just kick this bishop off the diagonal, and I can take with the e pawn. And once I take with the e pawn on d5, my knight can come to e4 after that. So h5 was just played, and now e takes d5 looks good. Okay. But also h6 and the threat of taking f4 in her miso, yeah. opening up the g-file. Yeah, I was so, going to say, I think he takes f4 first before recapturing on d5. Yep, and now there's a target. That's uh, not a great transition for Ifan, but at the same time, this king on d1 still is not safe. She's down a pawn. She can go for rook a to f8, for example, continue to put pressure mm -hmm. over there on the oh, okay. she backs different up. rook than I was expecting. That's not at all the rook I was expecting to go there. Um, but now rook a to c8, I mean, it's, this king on d1 is not a great piece. Yeah. So she has to think about playing g4, playing bishop f6, all the stuff, like, you're kind of, okay, maybe it's not so bad, but it just feels backwards. Like, f4 is coming for, no, f4 is probably too dangerous. Yeah, I forgot e4 is just a target. No, but so, I agree that she seems to be going backwards, but interestingly enough, despite that, the no, don't go b5. Oh, now the knight's going to come to c6. Uh-oh. Oh, unless she has some forcing follow-up, that was a bad idea. Captures, extremely bad idea. And that, taking g3 wouldn't even be great, because now there's all kinds of dark square potential for white to play a move like queen c3 at some point and mate on g7. Yeah, this is tough. Yeah, not the route that we expected it to go. So with this open diagonal, queen comes to d4 at any moment. Well, now rook takes g5 as a free pawn, okay, or this. Um, <laughs> domination on the diagonals is what this game is. You know, a2 is one of those desperate moves, hoping yeah. that uh, you'd hoping, forget. Yeah, so, or maybe hoping that somebody's pre-moved. So queen takes f7 doesn't work, but that's the idea. So now it's going to work next move. Queen takes f7 check, take, take h7. h7. Game over. Yeah, I thought perhaps even h7 was fine first, but this also works. And with no time on the clock, another one bites the dust. Well, this has been super impressive so far by Hikaru, in addition to the fact that we know Ifon was the underdog and you sort of expect Hikaru to be the stronger player. Um, I may end up being wrong about my predicted no adoption at this point. So. 
How many in a row is it right now? Well, given that the, the one that should have been a draw, I don't know that that can really count as a win for Hikaru. So, gotcha. so yeah, I think we're back. I think we're back to a zero setting in terms of the adoption counter. But, yeah, that's uh, uh, not so good. But okay, with the white pieces, she once again has a good position here. Yep. No, you're right. I mean, you gave great coaching advice, and uh, that's why we know you're a good coach. I mean, openings haven't been the problem. Transitions to the middle games haven't been the problem. I don't even know that tactics have been the problem. It's all come down to one thing, which has been time pressure. And at this point, it's uh, it's a really hard thing to adjust mid mid match, mid game. But you have to force yourself to do it. So you know something interesting when white when if Ifan just played C three and move fourteen. If it was Hikaru with the white pieces in a blitz game, he would have immediately played bishop d4, and if you play rook d8 pinning the bishop, he would have sacrificed his queen for the dark squares, right? Like, Im immediately. Um, I think that's just a very good practical decision in both classical and blitz chess, but we see these kind of hesitations, these, you know, reluctance for Yifan to really mix things up in certain positions. So I think she missed an opportunity to play bishop d4 right away and just take over the dark square. She still has a good position here, don't get me wrong, but I, I do think that was a missed opportunity, particularly from a blitz point of view. Agreed, 100%. And uh, the moves that follow, right? Like 23 seconds on knight g3, I think those are moves you have to play faster. So, um, right. But white is, white is in a good position here. Rookie one, nice move. The queen backs up. You have these double pawns to play for. So queen e3 hits a7. Perhaps now you maybe play a move like a3 to take a pawn off of uh, potential being the potential being grabbed by the bishop. Okay, b3 also does it, and maybe even better because now c4 will kick the bishop out of that really strong center square. Yeah, and the position just looks very beautiful. Um, for, for white. So if I'm black here, I think, well, do I play rook e8 and give up the two rooks for the queen, saying that, well, that gives me better chances, especially with the bishop against knight dynamic. I could play h5 to h4. So I would certainly consider playing a move like rook e8, but if I'm white, then I, you know, you put the onus on Yifan to say, well, am I going to accept that yep. dynamic? Here we see. I'd go queen c5 here to say, you know, my position is dominant. The end game is great for me. But if I take on e8 now, all of a sudden, as I was mentioning... It's a completely different type of game, right? Yes. And, and we've always said that in, in fast time controls, the queen just, whether she should or not objectively or, or would in a classical game, the queen tends to be such a better piece. And right as we say that, Yvonne's going to go for it, which, okay, that's not the wrong chess decision, right? I think she can play rook e3. She plays rook c1. That's fine, too. White is is much better here, and this is the right classical decision, but I agree with you that C queen c5 keeping the dynamic was probably the, the the easier practical decision. So isn't bishop takes g2 just a move here? Okay, queen c6 first, but I thought bishop takes g2 was just a free pawn. Same with the same exact idea. So this is already... Again, it's, it's really tough because in a classical game, you'd have this opportunity to really sit relax, take a breath, and think about yep. how this would you know, change the dynamic. In a blitz game, you don't really have that same opportunity to think. And so you're in this position where you say the two rooks should be better than a queen, but now you see the bishop is just landing on g2 to win a pawn. And, no, she, things and she immediately... I, I wanted to play rook e3 instead of rook c1 precisely because I'm like playing the Karpov chess, right? I just want all my pieces defended, no tactics, and not playing that way ends up just blundering into a... Uh, into a position where now her king is going to be open. So yeah, um, knight, knight f5 was a good decision, um, considering what's going on here. Take on g2. Oh, you can't play king h2 because queen f4 is ch annoying check. So rook g3 here. Black will play queen e2 mm -hmm. and come for the a pawn. The good news is that the, because the black pawn structure is so compromised. I mean, look at that. It's all these. I, every pawn is isolated. This is a symmetrical. It's a mirror image for black. Yeah. Right. They, <laughs> The H and A, the yep. F, and it's, it's just a gross pawn structure. But because it's like that, it makes it harder for black to win because even if you take the A pawn off the board, you're not creating a pass pawn so easily. Well, now F3 just looks very good for black. I mean, you're just making an attack. So Yeah, he plays queen E2, which I wonder if he's just going to repeat because probably rook 3 to D2. No, she plays rook 1 to D2, which is also fine. Queen E1, king G2. 
But why didn't Black now play F3. F3 there? It looked like F3 was leading to mate for Black before. Now, uh, now White can play Rook F3 because you can't actually attack my Rook from the square. Oh, yeah. This is actually getting a little dangerous for Black. If my Rook can find a way to... Hit F4. Hit exactly, hit F4. But at the same time, I mean, I can't even take it because these end games are still bad for White. <laughs> That's how tough this position can be. Well, it's interesting, too, just some of these blitz strategy, blitz observations that we've made and are making about, um, you know, decisions like to give up the queen for the two rooks. Though practical and sort of abstract, they are usually things that you have a better feel for when you've played a lot of online blitz and bullet, right? And so even for you, I mean, you're not uh, Hikaru Nakamura in terms of the amount of blitz and bullet you played, but, you know, you, you, you play more online, I think, than Epon does. And I think that that's why you would have better intuition and, and trust your, your judgment in those situations. I expect her to lose this game mainly because of time and the, and the practical nature of the queen being so difficult to deal with in fast time controls. Yep, and she's spending, she's burning clock at critical moments here. And King okay, E4 now. Now, King now, E4 King wins. E4. Oh my oh. gosh, that would have been sweet. King E4 and the, uh, the evaluation bar saw it. The black was winning, but Hikaru didn't. <laughs> King yeah, I, like I said, I don't have an evaluation bar, but when the king starts moving in and threatens to sacrifice the queen for the rook, queen yep. h5 here. Same idea, or queen, eight, or queen, queen f5. f5 one you're going to be sacking on f3, now king e2. Uh, so not, not, now, now f3. No, but f3, I just go rook e3 check, and then the problem is but then... you still can't take f3, right? But I just go king e1. I, I, your queen and king can't stay in that configuration forever. Ah, uh, okay. So here, I... Hmm. Queen g8, what does that do? But even with the missed opportunity, it still is just super tough here for Ifan to hold. She's going to do her best to sort of pre-move the situation. Good move. King E2 was a very good move. Now play yeah. Rook D3. Okay, now now she seems to have defended her way out of it. But, be, but she's she's whoa. losing some time. That was a sneaky move. Yeah, Rook E3. Don't do it again, though, because then Queen <laughs> will check. Yeah. Wait, what's, what's going on here? At some point, White can even consider playing Rook D8, but like... It's tough to sit forever and do nothing. King e4 again. King e4 wins. It wins on the spot. There it is. Oh, and then because White can't, is running out of moves, you can't keep your rooks defended forever, and she was yeah. she lost some time. Well, again, I mean the the opportunities were missed, but uh, eventually Hikaru did what we've seen him do, right? Use the time, um, use a, a big advantage on the clock to push a position that even objectively that final position is probably a draw, right? It's just the fact that. She doesn't have any time on the clock. Yeah, I mean, so. once the king got to e4, she's in trouble. But earlier, she was doing well to defend it off. And the thing is, Danny, as we keep talking about time, if you had more time, you can say, well, as white with the two rooks, can I play rook d8 and start coming after black's pawns? Maybe my rook on f3 can't be attacked another time because I always have rook e8 check. Mm -hmm. But she had no time to consider that, so she's shuffling her pieces back and forth. Yep. And then Hikaru just shows his prowess both uh, strategically and in terms of quick chess. So his reflexes are and intuition are a great combination. And he just is you know, unintentionally showing off his might. Yep. Well, and plus, uh, I saw a comment, Hikaru's a, a dirty flagger. Dirty flags happen a lot. And I'm not saying Hikaru is not a dirty flagger. But in these situations with increment, it's not exactly the case. You know, I, I think that some would argue that's one of the reasons why Hikaru hasn't been able to beat Magnus Carlsen in this format is because of the increment. Um, and, uh, you know, those... That just that little bit of extra time, even if it is only one second, makes the chess matter instrumentally more, right? You just don't get those crazy all out, truly dirty flagging somebody positions. So I, I don't feel like it's a car flagging here. I feel like it's it's bad time management based on the fact that, you know, you're you're in a you were in a better position really, uh, a winning position perhaps, uh, earlier yeah. even before you played queen takes uh, for the two rooks. But under time pressure it's hard to keep playing moves at the level you need to. So Yep. And a position like this, Danny, actually is kind of in the same vein, is the black pieces with no clear plan of how to make progress. Yeah, black should play A4, honestly. Yep. And it's one of those moves I would play both over the board and in blitz. And the reason why A4 was so good for black is it gives you a clear plan. Just chisel open the queen side, hammer through on the B3 square, and then maybe double your rooks there. Now, with the black pieces, I'm just like, look at my position. If white just goes knight to E5, even queen to E5 here to offer an exchange of queens, but whatever, knight to e5, I, I just don't like black's position. You're, mm -hmm. you're stuck with a backwards e-pawn. You haven't played a4 yet, so maybe white can avoid it altogether. Uh, well, now a4, 
just, just play A4. I mean, that's really my advice right now, just play A4. Uh, I guess the drawback is queen A3, and then I take over the A file, but you need something to do as black, or she does it. Yeah, A4 makes sense. Um, the big issue, though, as you said, Hikaru's not going to do anything with those pawns, and the, once the smoke clears, black has a whole lot of positional weaknesses to deal with. E6, the doubled C pawns. Um, so how would you get counterplay? Not really. Maybe maybe you have to play rook a8 and try to fight for the a file. No, she plays well, rook there, f8. There's nothing. There's nothing on the f file worth. I was going to say she should have because here comes rook a6 and the c6 pawn is. Oh, but don't take that pawn quite yet. Look at the king on g2. Oh yeah, yeah. That would be uh, that would be a pretty fun little tactic here, everybody. If white can get black gets d4, attacking the queen and pinning the rook uh, to the king, that would be that would be a big problem. So. Hikaru sees it, plays queen a1. Now the question is, are you trying to trade b3 for c6? You'd love to trade one of your weakest pawns for a more healthy pawn on b3, but the problem is the c6 pawn is sort of just a, a gateway drug to the rest of the weak pawns for black, c5 right. and e6. So now that's uh, maybe I would have played bishop e8 there instead, but I think Hikaru will take on c6 and immediately get more access to these other weak pawns. If, if I'm black... I, on intuition, I go queen takes d3 and just say your king is exposed and the light squares. Yep, like 100%. continue taking pawns. And I think um, I think if you do that and immediately follow knight b8 with even a move like knight e4 threatening rook f2, who knows, right? You mix it up and put a ton of pressure on your opponent. Yep. And so now with this knight on e5, it's funny, Danny. We, when we look at a knight on h2, we actually say that's a very strong piece. When most people look at that knight, or when people who are not as experienced, they say this knight on h2 is not doing anything. It covers g4. It covers f3. It's not going to be under attack if crazy attack tactics happen. So um, here, just rook b1, right? Can we just switch gears to the queen side and just yep. go rook a7, rook b7, and check me on the 7? Nope, rook b1 played. Uh, queen on a1 doing a great job of allowing the rook to go forward on the a file and also protecting the knight on e5. Rook a7 was a good-looking move there. So now queen d8, at least you're staying in the game. Wait, can I... No, I thought, okay, I thought D takes C4, there's problems in the light squares, so Rook C7, just maybe. Yeah. Doubled Rooks on the 7th rank. Feels bad, man. Uh, queen D5, F3. Wait, Still. wait, is there a check? Yeah, it's rook G, the rook, the knight is pinned from F6. I was like, wait, where's the checkmate? H7's covered. But once I take on G7, I go Rook H7, check, yep. and it's a force mate. Because knight the, G6, uh, double be check. In fact, here we go. We're going to see it, everybody. Rook takes, moves, rook, rook h7, and then knight g6, double check and mate on h8. Or knight f7, double check and mate on h6. It might even be prettier. Mm, you dirty girl. I'll show everybody yours. Ah, oh, too late. Can't show them. Game switch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was a that was a nice finish by Hikaru. Yeah, just critical moments, right, with these things where... I think about I, I'm just so prone to sacrifice in the exchange. I love doing it, um, but you know it's it's difficult if you're not accustomed to having that kind of style of play where you just give up the exchange and go on the initiative. That is Hikaru's style of play. I've mentioned it in consecutive games where there's that bishop d4 sacrificing the queen for the dark squares, mm -hmm. um, and in that game, just going queen takes d3 and giving up material. And I know I, I'm fully aware that in my position, it's so much easier to say this because I'm not playing. And I know when I play Hikaru, he often just wipes me off the board. So it's, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. But I, and I also know based on Hikaru's game that he likes to mix up the actions. He's not afraid to make things complicated, even if objectively it might not be the best move chess-wise. Practically speaking, he's so fast that he's going to calculate the tactics more quickly than I am or than, than Yi Fan will. So, um, yeah, things have really been going Hikaru's way, even when... Ifan's getting good position after getting after good position. And here, look at the pawns on f3. No, no longer on f3. h3, g3, e3. I'm like, well, at some point, Black's going to try to play f4 and just break open the king side. And we see this bishop on g2. I talked about this in a recent game, or maybe not that recent at this point. But what ideally happens if white goes e4, which didn't just happen, but if white had played e4, you play against this lousy light square bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now there's an attack brewing. Because if you take on f4, of course, I can always take with my knight on f4. Now, white did a, made a great decision here. He found it a great move, knight e4, saying, you know what, my pawn on g3 is 
is protected, but that's not even the important part. The important thing is I'm counterattacking you. Yep. Like, well, I didn't like that capture. That's not what I would have done because now you're just handing over the dark squares. The queen keeps from going with the d8 to h4. The pawn on g3 could have just been left there for the time being. I don't care if I lose that yeah, pawn. Yeah, I was going to suggest that she does. She she should have done what she's doing now before taking on f4, played king h1, preparing the opportunity that the g1 square is used by a rook, especially against the king on the open g file with the queen on a1. But now, now she's looking to kind of bail out, and black will be much better in the end game because of the dark square knights. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. She should have maintained that tension there. She's playing a little faster this game. A little bit. Yeah. Maybe. And now queen g. F no, queen, queen g5, g5 might doesn't not. work, right? Because black can trade <laughs> and then trade on g2 and win a win a piece. Yep. That's unfortunate. So now can black can Ikara just play rook? Okay, I was thinking of rook f5 and then rook g8 behind it. But knight d3 does the same thing I want to. Now rook g8 just wins because g2 is hanging. Rook g8. There is played. Yeah, that's uh, that's a trap. And the queen's tra the queen's trapped. You're losing a piece even if the queen w weren't Ooh, trapped. Ooh, I was wondering if we were going to see it. Even though I think she's just going to get completely killed, I'm always excited to see a queen sack. <laughs> Makes me feel yeah, good. Yeah. The, the problem is that the knights are still on the board. If you could yep. trade the knights off, you'd have much greater chances to draw. Yep. But the problem is this knight on f4 is just wreaking havoc in the position. The h3 pawn is weak. At any time, I'm dislodging your bishop from g2, and your knight on h4 can become uh, a hanging piece. So if you just could knock those knights off the board, I think white's chance of drawing go up tremendously because you just put your rook on f3 and play like a4. And so that's what she's aiming for. She's doing a good job here of uh, trying to hold the balance. But if you do take on g2, uh, then you, as white, you can just take back and put your knight in g3, rook on f2, and shelter yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the real issue for black and trying to convert this, is if you trade the minor pieces too soon, you're not going to have good winning chances. Um, but the, the queen is a queen, right? The queen is a queen. And uh, these positions are much, much easier to play when you have the queen. Uh, so, okay. How do you prod to get weaknesses that the queen can can win with? Um, that that'll be the next question. But I think a four at some point. Oh, this just went to oh, piece. Oh, just so. went to piece. So straight up, she blundered the knight. I was I was not even, I wasn't even looking at the king side. I swear, I was looking over the queen side. I'm considering moves like a four. I want to undermine the c four pawn to be weak. And all of a sudden, I look back to the king side and piece is gone. <laughs> Lol. As no, they, I'm totally as they, with as you. The That's say. Lol. I was looking for the same kind of stuff because. Well, you're trying to uh, win the game, and if you, know, you don't expect your opponent to blunder. So it's good to think about the other side of the board, creating a second weakness. Yep. And here, Ifan is... Now she got a pawn on f5. In other games, we've seen this pawn e4 without the pawn on f5. And it's good to have that pawn there, because it cements your pawns um, on e4, and you could play f4 yourself in the near future. So now knight takes h5, should be played... But again, I said what I said about Hikaru sacrificing material for the initiative. Yep. He's happy to do it. So knight h5, rook h5, take queen h5. Here we go. Oh, he okay. takes c6 first, but then he'll take h5, I expect. There it is. But this is good for black. Yeah, queen this... h4 trades the queens, right? Well, the oh, queen no, can come back to e2, but yeah. Um, but no, I agree. I think that despite the dynamic energy that Hikoro brings with, like you said, being willing to sacrifice the exchange. This should just be good for Ifon. We're yet to see Ifon get her first win. Um, so, along with pretty much anybody watching the show that has a heart, we're rooting for Ifon to get a win. <laughs> so, let's hope that that happens here. Yep. And let's it see. It hasn't been without chances. I would say that the overall quality of chess hasn't been much better for Hikaru over Ifon, but the main thing has just been the time management with it, um, so which is part of chess. That's part of the game. That's it's certainly part of the speed chess championship. Okay, this is not going to go yeah, her I was way. Say, that was why not castle to protect f five because she was worried about rook h one and like an attack on her king. But this is no, she can castle now actually. But White's getting back these pawns. G four is hanging. D six is weak. I would play. I would play castle and just hope that you're surviving. I don't really know what else you can do. But castle maybe then knight g5. Yeah, knight g5 actually looks even more 
irritating than the rook on h1 would have been in the other line. Uh, if you go knight g5, I'll take on c3, I guess, and then play rook takes f2. Because uh, I, I protect h7 this way. Uh -huh. I'm still scared to do you, it. You can, I mean, also, you can also take on c3 and play rook f5. Ooh, that's kind of annoying, too. That might actually be much... Oh, she doesn't, but what, what was taking on c3 and rook f5? Was that almost winning the knight, it seemed? Well, this looks bad for... I don't like black's position right now. On the analysis board, looking at bishop takes c3 and then rook f5 is maybe maybe an opportunity she had. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Definitely looked interesting. This still is interesting, but now white has a pawn and a light square bishop for a rook. And the rooks are not doing anything here. d6 is hanging. Rook g1 will threaten the g6 knight, and that would win the queen. So I don't even see a good move for black here because rook g1 is such a powerful threat. So now rook g1 still works, because if you take my rook, I go queen h7 checkmate. So rook g1 just, oh, rook g1 made knight takes f5. Yeah, that was, another that was queen kind of sack. Strange. How many of these do we do we need before we feel complete? Yeah, actually, I really like what she just did, considering how awful I thought her position was going to be. This queen sacrifice at least keeps her in the game. Right. And her king is weak, so we always like queens when your enemy king is weak. Right. We want to keep that queen on the board. So b4 played, that makes sense, trying to go b5, I guess, and king b3 is an option, just ex gaining space on the queen side. h5. Yeah, third queen sack in four games. So now, hmm, how do, I can't go after your f2 pawn. Now this is, Hikar is playing this part very well, very accurate. So bishop c3, bishop c3, rook takes f2, check, king moves, rook back to f7, but you'll probably beat me with your two pa your two pawns on the queen side, your two on one over there. And I'll lose my h pawn as well. Wait, isn't that just a free pawn? Knight takes, oh wait, knight takes c5, bishop at b2, then rook takes f2, check. How does that pan out? Complicated. But the h4 pawn also Falls. That's why I would, you know, want to take on d5, because I'm thinking I win the d pawn and I'll win the h pawn soon after. But at the same time, I don't really want to give the f2 pawn. So, yep. yeah. Now there's real problems because of I don't know, but rook g5, h4 couldn't have been taken. Maybe it could have. Um. But a car doesn't go for it. Yeah, there's some rook g2 stuff. So she's trying. I mean, she's trying to get after this f2 pawn. The car doing his very best to keep it. But now for black, if you go rook f5 back, you Maybe can't go f4 for white because I think I d4? have d4. I, yeah. I was gonna say I think d4 is a candidate move here as well. She Whoa. takes to get f2 though. Okay, so now knight f5. Knight yeah. f5. Get active. Okay, there now she's go. turning. She's turning this one, rook g1, just go for it. Rook g1, bring the rook around, mating that time. Okay, king f7 is also a good move, but you just gotta go rook g1. You have to find rook g1. And you gotta find it quickly. That's yeah, the what's issue. going on? The, just rook, they actually okay. found it. Rook g1, I don't think the, queen, the queen is actually completely frozen on this square. No moves, no way out. Yeah, and she can't... Uh, sorry, Hikaru cannot stop her from check, 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 check. At the very least, a perpetual, right? After if I'm, b7, she can check, and the king can never run to the b file without eventually the skewer and winning the pawn. So right, and the king cannot run too far as well because it runs. If I put a rook b1 check, and you run to the a file, I'll mate you with rook a2 mate. So um, I think that we're already in rook d1, rook c1 check r repetition. So go yeah. rook c1. And I think he allowed. No, he doesn't. Oh, rook b1. Allow. No, isn't black better now? King black, e6 black is completely winning. Rook c2 is mate. Oh no! I think mind. I think King E six was made. King E six instead king of off. Rook check would have been made. Oh my gosh! Look at this, everybody on the analysis board. King E six. There was no checks, and there was no way to deal with Rook C two. Oh, uh, it's going to be a flag. Look at two point six seconds left. Yeah, but no, this no is no time. I mean, she still shouldn't lose, but no time. Look at that nice move. Queen A eight, by the way, was designed specifically to stop like a King E eight pre move. <laughs> Tricky Hikaru. Wow, she made that with 0.2 seconds left. 0.2 seconds, but now there's knight c6 coming. 
Oh, she made a point two again. She's gaining some time. Go. Uh -oh. No. No, she couldn't do it. Wow. That's sad. She was really playing some great defense there. She played phenomenal defense and active defense. She really should have won there in the end. Again, King E6. King E6 trapped the king. Yeah, I mean, I, the king is run, making a wild run up the queen side. And once it gets to C5, it's trying to take that pawn on D5. So King E6 protects your knight on F5 and stops yep. the king from going D5. Um, so this is, this is tough. I... You know what, I, I was just thinking about it because in the first match we saw Fabiano get totally obliterated by Leveronian, right? Levon right. just was on fire. And I think I was felt a little worse in that one because uh, Fabi, on paper at least, wasn't as big of an underdog as he showed himself to be. Right. In this match, you know, Hikaru is such an overwhelming favorite that it's almost expected, which is sort of sad to say, but, you know, it becomes part of, par for the course. And... In this position, again, we see White having a nice position. I would think she's she's waiting for Castle King size so she can play G4. Now you can just take on B7 and then play e moves like Queen E2 or, or G4. G or or G4, G4, yeah. Well, this is one, again, where the principled moves where you just gain space, control the center, and be as aggressive as possible is, is the way you get an advantage against this kind of very passive opening by Black. This is how um, Zviad Azoria beat Hikaru in the U.S. Championship. He played something like this, got a very passive setup, and Zviad just punished him. Oh boy, this looks really bad. Really for bad black. for black. Because you can't even play e6 to go knight f6 checks. So just go queen e2, castle queen set. This is. Yeah, this is this is the game she needs to get. Not to say there haven't been others, but uh, taking unnecessary time here would really be a tragedy. H4, h5, and just do it without thinking. And Danny, you're going to appreciate this, but Yakov Norwitz is in the chat, and he said, I got next. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't pay attention to anything outside of his own world where he plays Blitz and Bullet all night. <laughs> <laughs> so this is pretty well publicized at this it's point. It's pretty well publicized. Like, everybody knows about it. And you think uh, Ifon and Hikaru are just randomly jumping in to play a massive epic match on chess.com? <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also funny because Hikaru uh, is not exactly just say, okay, Yakov, let's go. I mean, it's just it's hilarious. Yeah. But speaking of hilarious, this king side for black is hilariously bad because that knight on f6 is I'm just disappointed dominant. she didn't just rush the h pawn though. Um, and I still feel like it's time to just it's time to go for the attack. I agree with you. H4, h5. With no shame. Yeah, h4, h5 looks really good. Because there's nothing, yep, there's h4. There's nothing Hikaru can do to stop it. What? Take on h6 and put your knight on g5. Yeah. Actually, don't, just take on h6 and don't put your knight on g5 because the bishop will be terrible on h6. So you just go g takes h6, bishop h6, and I don't know, something. King b1, maybe just get your king. All right, she starts the king b1. But I didn't like that because I wanted to take away, do the en passant, Give yourself another open file to work with. Still looks really good. So what? how does white make progress here? Rook d7. Okay, she went bishop c1 first. So rook d7 now. Yep, there it is. And, ooh, if you go rook c8. No, never mind. I was with a blunder. I was like, can I go queen takes c5? But after queen takes c5, so many things are hanging, including the knight on f3, but also rook takes d7, and then the queen on c5 would be hanging there too. So ignore that. Black's position is getting better, I think. Now when you commit to the pawn on b3, knight bd5 happens, and c3 is a weakness, a very weak square. Black can play c4, Hikaru can, to just open up the position more. This is not good. Not good. So, hmm. Yeah, so b4 now made by black. Just play b4, queen, a6, rook, a7. Uh, let's see. So b4 by white. What a move. What a concept. So if I take... 
And then NF3 is hanging. So how do I properly attack it? I don't know, so, but I'm just so disappointed that the king side got locked up. It's just like, I feel like Hikaru was a Houdini. Just from the perspective that Ifon getting a win there with an attack would have been exactly what the doctor ordered. Now f4 is hanging. Why can't I just take it? If you go knight takes f4, I'll play... Don't know. Maybe like, knight d4. And, and the knight's under fire. Okay, that's a pawn. Here comes... The other knight gets out, and black will be the one with a mating attack before this game is over. Yep, I agree. Knight e2 was an interesting shot there. But I guess Ooh, white, I, white, I like Knight E2 a lot. That was well, awesome. I think white, could have, white could have taken D5 though first. With the knight in so. Gotcha. Now knight d4 for white. Wait, couldn't wasn't there some knight c3 check in between moves just now? Oh yeah. Both sides making blunders in this game. <laughs> this game feels a little sloppy to me. Um, but again, just it's a it's just a sign of the intuit the intuition that is just not there for Ifon in this format just because or at least not on the level of a guy like Hikaru Nakamura right because um, taking a lot of time and not just playing the moves that you and I were screaming for and and now she's uh, she's losing yet another game that she had no business losing so sad um, but okay she's a true professional Ifon knows that she's the underdog in this format she doesn't agree to it because of anything but she wants to get better. And, uh, you know, she, uh, she knows she was playing the, the pairing that nobody, including the two-seed, Sergei Karyaki, no one wants to play Hikaru. That's a fact. <laughs> so. I agree. That no, absolutely nobody wants to play Hikaru because, well, he, he's earned the respect of everyone for a reason. He's just a, such a monster at these time controls. And you know what, Danny? Yep. Even after a 15-to-1 score, I, think, I believe he's gained zero rating points in this match. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, this is right where he started, 29-92. Giving up a couple draws, that's, I mean, tisk-tisk for Hikaru. Yeah, what a slacker, what underachiever. A slacker. <laughs> Taking off the hat, though. Leaning in, and, and uh, Robert Hess is my witness that in our pregame prep and all the production time that I'm putting in, I asked Hikaru, and he said specifically, I'm not going to get any closer than this. <laughs> and he was, and his full face was showing and leading up. Uh, apparently, Robert, he was going to get a little closer than that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you heard him say that, right? As my witness. <laughs> and to be fair, he did leave to the bathroom or something. So maybe when he came back, he forgot his positioning. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but just, who doesn't look like this, you know, this angle here? We just it's, get. It's a headache because afterwards, I always have to hear it from the other chess.com teammates like, Danny, why can't you capture the cameras perfectly? And I'm like, Hikaru is not on camera right now. He's not anywhere to be seen. This is true. It's uh, not your fault. I agree, Danny. All right. Normally, Mo moving on. Sorry, moving on. Just my, my perfect production. But uh, Ifan looks great. She's uh, she's 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 kept her position. So. And her speaking of posi her position, her position looks amazing right yeah, now for Black. Yeah, it does. The king's on F1 for White. Loves. I, I was gonna say, was that a mouse slip? <laughs> Did he? Uh, need actually, it? No, there's no, a no, check. Okay, okay. It was a check on uh on uh move fifteen. So okay, got it. So she's moving her pieces backwards, but I thought queen h four made perfect sense. Like you just put your queen in a more active space, you hit the d four square another time, you sort of keep white a little bit stuck. Now what if white just has bishop f three? Yeah, bishop f three looks good. Uh you have trouble moving the b pawn to develop the bishop because c six becomes an open square. And uh, maybe he just oh. goes back and forth here. Yeah. She'll go queen h4 now. Why, why, why is this knight on d7? Well, she wants to bring the knight to f6 badly, right? To come into the e4 square. And I think that's what she'll go for now. g3, knight f6, king g2, knight e4. I mean, I, I, I like this plan for her, actually, because even now she can play knight e4. Yeah. Okay, so that does make actually a lot of sense. So queen f4 was played. Now she can maybe play... Maybe something to G5. I was going to say, I want to put something on G5, just not sure what it is. I'm also looking at knight takes F2 tactics that don't work because D4 is very well defended. But yeah, I'm putting the king in a, in a pin, but it just doesn't pan out. So something to G5. Okay, yeah, here we go. G5. That's what I wanted. 
There we go. Let's go. Let's go with the aggressive chess. G5, if she trades, if he trades everything on E4, it's a phenomenal endgame for black with the bishop pair and immediate pressure on the knight. So that's not really an option. Oh, okay, it is an option because really backing up the queen was probably even worse, but this is just great for black. Yep, so just bishop d7, something like that looks good. Mm -hmm. yep. was played. Get the other rook to the e-file quickly, yep. quickly without thinking. There you go. I feel like we're, we're coaching right now. <laughs> well, you know, I really don't want to coach her because since I'm coaching the women's team against her, you know, I kind of... It puts me in a tough spot, but you're, you know, you are right. She is doing a better job this game of playing uh, quickly. And so after B4, just play Bishop B6. It's one of those positions where, okay, Bishop A7, Bishop B6, just play one, and she did. Now, can I go after the D5 on Rook E5? Yeah, why not? Whoa. Whoa, why? Why do we like the obstacle Bishop ending? That's going to help White's drawing chances. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, she, she's if bishop f6, she'll go king h7 to g6, so that at least is good news. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I did not want that to happen if I'm black here. So what's a card doing? <laughs> bishop a4 to make sure that you don't have counterplay there. That's a very nice move, actually, just from a, a disciplined standpoint to really also makes it very hard for white to ever challenge the c-file because that c2 square is held. So. so, okay, black is still... In, in, in a position where two results is are, are what she's playing for, Yoda. Two results are what she's playing for, so she shouldn't really be able to lose this. Um. Sorry, people are debating whether or not I'm a GM in the Twitch chat, so it's pretty funny. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, is Robert Hess a GM? Someone called me an NM. I was like, <laughs> uh, I don't think I've been an NM since I was like 14 or something. I don't since even you know. Were four? <laughs> it's okay. Tell everybody about the last time I taught you at a chess camp when you were uh, an IM. Um, you didn't teach me anything, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Wait Robert, a second. Robert, tell them the truth. You said you loved my lecture and you actually learned something from it. Isn't isn't White going up a pawn now? Oh, something went really the, wrong. Changing the her. subject. Yep, I got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something went wrong here, but she still shouldn't lose. I'm going to say it again. So let's see. Is she going to hold this, Danny? I'm not sure. And yes, I did learn a lot from your lecture. What was your lecture on again? Oh, great. <laughs> I know you remember the game. And I the don't way. remember the game. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm sorry. <sighs> Moving on. G5, and then mate on H6 and H8. Oh, it actually looked awesome, and it shouldn't happen. Go for it. Go for it, Ikaro. I'm surprised Ikaro wouldn't see that. Uh, I think he did, actually, and I think what he did was even better, because if you did it in my move order, she had bishop c6 trapping the rook. So I think what he played with rook f6 was much better, precisely because he's going to get it. <laughs> Uh-oh, f5 check, only move. Or f6, whatever, both... En passant. En passant is just winning. Looks good. No, he wants more. You know why? Because he wants g6 and mate. <laughs> it's actually not a, not a bad idea at all. Naka, what a boss. Did I say that she couldn't lose this one? I thought I said that. You did say that. Hey, um, Danny, everyone wants to know what the lecture was about. Okay, I'm going to tell you the, the what it was about, and you're going to have to remember the game. Okay, I'll try. It was a Grunfeld, the exchange sack line. No idea whatsoever. Robert. No, I'm being serious. My memory about things from 2006 or, not very, or whatever year were not very good. And Checkmate's about to... Wait. Yeah. Okay, Rook comes to that side. Also only two seconds. Who played in the game? I have no idea. You're so mad at me, but I'm really not trying to joke right now. <laughs> oh, man. I don't get mad at you. I, can't, I legitimately I can't have. You. Was what? it Petrosian uh, Glurich? No, it was about high-level opening preparation. It was about expanding and improving on other novelties. It was the sheer off to Poloff game in the exchange sack line with Grunfeld. Oh, wait. The, the, which game was that? The one with the bishop ending? Oh, my gosh. You are just, you're, you're hopeless. 
I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to go back to talking about these games yep. because let's do it. I did I, not mean uh, for this conversation to go that that, that King, direction. Kingish Gambito goes, Danny breaking out the dad tone. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I really have no idea what you're talking about. But anyway, back to this chest here. Yeah. Speaking of things I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, wait, okay. what's going on Yvonne here? Yvonne is just in a great position here. So he's Hikari's essentially what he wants to do is trade the light score bishops, play knight e4, and play f5 all at once. And yep. castle. On. Or he only. might also want to play h4 and, you know, Sack, sack, mate, as Fisher would say. Yeah, um, that, that looks like a decent strategy. So if you're white, you want to play. No, you don't want to do this because now Bishop G two and H four looks great. I was going to say I play H four first. Yeah, H four first, maintain the tension. Now trade it all at once. You're going to check the king to E one. I don't actually see the follow up mate. If takes everything, Queen H three. Oh no, you take with the queen. You're never happy from then on out. After King takes, Sakara will play Queen F five here. Castle long. Okay, that's also something that works. Threatening rook g4. But queen f5 is, is coming. This is not good, Danny. It's not good at all. Nope. I just, yeah, now I'm starting to really feel that pain vicariously through her here because I know what it's like to be on the losing end of vicious Hikaru Nakamura games. And so at this point, yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling that pain. Hey, it looks like someone just donated. Yeah? Yeah, Snake Mayor. Is that Kevin Durant? <laughs> okay, Bishop F6. So isn't Black just going to castle queenside and play Rook H8? Oh, Queen F2 stops casting queenside because Queen... Oh, no, it doesn't really stop, it does it. But King D7 is a smart move because the A7 pawn was sneakily under attack by the Queen on F2. So funny, Jack Z says, I didn't expect an NBA reference in the chess stream. Well, they clearly don't know me if they didn't think I'm going to talk about basketball. Well, because... they also don't watch many of our streams. I feel like we're, we're a walking sports reference on a regular basis. And you love baseball, too. I hate baseball. I know. Get out of here. That's why I said that, Robert. You I don't, know. You don't just... always have to. Sometimes you just accept the joke. That's part I, It of... just infuriates me because baseball I really don't like. But I could talk about basketball all day, so... <laughs> Smash Bob Squarepants says Nakamura looks like Jim from The Office. What? Yeah, I don't, okay. get, I don't get that one. Me neither. Oh, I'm the Earl Boykins of chess. I love Earl Boykins. I used to have his jersey because he's a five foot five NBA player. Yeah. Yeah. I loved Earl, Earl Boykins. He could drop like 12 points a game and he had a sweet block. I think he had like 30 plus blocks in his career. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go back to the chess here, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're just getting me distracted here. But Earl Boykins was a boss. Five minutes left in the three-minute portion before the the bullet show begins. Um, Hikaru, calmly, calmly scooting in a lot closer than he ever said he would. So let's see, isn't this just devastating? The A-pawn can't be stopped. If you take on H3, I take back, and my A-pawn starts rolling. So now just take on C3, no. Yeah, take on C3, play Queen A7 check, and then play A3. Should be good enough. And that's what a car is going to do. Yeah, this is just uh, very straightforward. Okay, rook b8, same idea. Go a3, a2, and get a queen. h4 gives the king some space for Ifan, but after e6, there's no mating attack or anything. Uh, not that it was even look particularly close to one. Car wins again by resignation. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. I, you know, we're going to get some queen references yep. going on. Pretty excited for that movie coming up. Same. Pretty excited. I got a lot of people talking about basketball here. Yep. Stay focused. Yeah. My bad. Um, you know, the, the inner sports quotient of me is just coming out to play. But 
In this particular game with the white pieces, Hikaru doing his typical setup, he starts with b3, and what he's done here is he's made a pawn structure such that black will have hanging pawns, these d5 and c5 pawns, once white plays cd5 has just happened. And these pawns are very vulnerable to an attack because they can't protect each other. The pawn always likes to be protected from another pawn, but at the same time, they control many of the vital squares in the center of the board. So d5 for now is very well defended, c5 similarly, and at some point black, if white goes knight a4, will be met by moves knight e4. So bishop a3, again, putting pressure on that c5 square. If I'm black, I move my rook, say, to e8 or d8, makes perfect sense. And knight a4, now you play knight e4 to protect your c-pawn and to gain some space in the center of the board. And don't be shocked if black has knight takes f2 threats up her sleeve, because that's why I wanted my rook on e8. My d5 pawn I felt was going to be defended, so I put in my knight on e4. I actually threatened ideas with sacrificing the f2 square. And um, queen a5 has been played. So what's the idea? c5 defended. If you go bishop takes a6 now, after a6, rook a8, I pin you. And white should probably play rook c2, I want to say. Yo. But after rook, rook c2, I'll play bishop h6 and come for your f2 square. So... Wait, now knight c3 just picks up material. So that was a blunder by Hikaru, right? Knight c3 just hits e2, hits d1. Yeah, he must have must have missed it. It doesn't exactly win material, though, right? Because rook can go to d2. Oh, yeah, rook d2. I was going to play d4 at some point. So, yeah, just, just d4 there. Yeah, I think rook d2, d4 comes anyway, and I think he pawn. Oh, he, he's giving up the a pawn, and she doesn't want it. She wants the bishop here instead. Maybe d4 now. But bishop takes c5. Bishop c5. Then you're not threatening my queen because rook e1 might be some... I'll take on f3 first. Because your, your bishop is pinned to your rook on the back rank. Oh, very nice. So it's the same idea. If rook takes c8 there, rook takes back on c8 with c1 mating ideas. Yeah, that would have been very nice. So black's play d3 here, right? Just push that pawn. So you took on c5. After bishop takes c5, okay, so queen c5 play, but take, take d3. That's a far advanced pass pawn, but it's not working out. So queen b7, I, yep, played. It's a good move. Well, with only a minute left, seems more than likely that this will actually be our, our last three-minute game before moving on to bullet. So uh, unfortunately, your pep talk for Yifond wasn't, she didn't hear it, Robert but she, she's, uh, she's doing her best. And wow, huge cheer there. Thank you. From Jack Z. And uh, thank you for the last donation too that I forgot to mention. Bringing that prize fund up, just a little bit of extra spending money for the next time Hikaru uh, goes to the Olympian. We know he needs that extra cash. So. Yep. So here, take on E3, have to take with the pawn, has happened. So white is up a pawn, and it's an important queenside pawn. Mm -hmm. And you know everyone can see that for Yifan, it's a tough day, a tough morning, I should say, because it's early in China right now. But I, I think we should give her a special shout out because she's a Rhodes Scholar, mm -hmm. and so she will be studying in Oxford come the fall time. So yep. not only is she- One of the reasons uh, we actually did the match so quickly, originally the planned date for Hikaru and Yifan was later, I can tell you that, but- um, her schedule is a is a very busy one, just like Hikaru's, but for, for, for different reasons. She'll be at Oxford while Hikaru is playing the Sinkfield Cup, Rapid and Blitz, and Classical. She'll be there for the whole month of August. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Feels like she's holding. Agreed. I like this G4 plan. Take E4. So what Hikaru's gonna try to do is play a5 and then go after the a6 pawn to threaten idea with b5, try to push that pawn through. So mm -hmm. he starts with rook a8. So if I'm e5, I put my bishop on d, do I put my bishop on d2 or g1? Which diagonal do I want bishop on? It's an important That's question. A good question, actually, yeah. Um, I think the most crucial thing will be counterplay against the white king, but including using your own f pawn before Hikaru gets anything too devastating against a6 right so bishop f4 okay bishop b6 was played yeah i think now danny the, wrong wrong corner pawn by the way so yeah if, no, if we could trade off a for b pawn and just trade the rooks off it's yep. an immediate yep 
And of course, what Robert's pointing out, everybody, is that this pawn here would eventually be queening on a light square, which is the wrong color when compared to the bishop. Very important to always have foresight in these types of endings. It's not just because you don't want to get that endgame, but it helps your calculations in all the earlier positions to understand where you can and cannot drive the position when exchanges get offered, all these things. So very educational point there, Robert. Um, so, okay, just, there it goes. There's that pawn break that we're talking about. Uh, bishop b6 likely, yep. So play rook c6 to get the rook behind the pawn. So rook c6 allows the rook to go c3 to a3. Yeah. And then the b pawn can also start, ooh, I don't like the passive setup. The good news is the rook can't go to b8 with that bishop on e5. Yeah. So that might be the saving grace in the position. But bishop c5 just wins the b pawn. Okay. This also, similarly, you can't go bishop c3 because rook b8. So I thought bishop c5 would have just picked up the pawn without any problems. So yep. I don't know why, why he, didn't he do put that. it on Now e3. it seems like the king will get back in time. Okay. Now, although if we're talking about corners, Robert, she, it is the right corner for black to be able to draw. The opposite color corner of your own bishop is the corner you want to be in if you're drawing king and rook versus king and bishop. So it makes her job much easier should she ever need to give up her rook for the pawn and the bishop on a7, what? it should be an immediate draw. Yeah, but now she's losing. King d5, yep. Why is she losing yet? Bishop e7 still? Rook f7. The king's getting pushed to the, the back rank. Ah, uh, king e8 is met by king e6. Here, here he comes. Bishop and now rook b7. Rook b7, game over. OMG. Oh. It's painful. It is painful. It's the... Uh, wait. It was supposed to be their last three-minute game, and the game has been aborted. The players, it, time for a break um, before the bullet. That was the last three-minute game. Um, the uh, the match is tough right now. We're getting we're getting some some subscriptions. We appreciate that as well as all the donations and all the all the support. All five thousand plus of you that are here. Don't go anywhere. We have bullet ahead. Will Hikaru be the first person, I think, ever to reach uh, 30 points in a speech chess championship match? I don't think so. But uh, Ifan and uh, Hikaru will continue with the last segment of bullet in uh, just a few moments. So we'll be right back. Sometimes I don't want to go away from the commercial, Robert, only because I'm like enjoying. I mean, not the, the waiting screen. I like, I'm just sitting here, like, off camera, just like. All right. We, uh, we are going to be off very, very quickly here with the, uh, the bullet portion in a match that is uh, proving to be uh, very, very difficult for the challenger, Ifon. Uh, what's, uh, whose mic is on? Uh, no idea, but uh, it might be yours. Might be my mic. Who knows? Let's start. Bullet. We go. The last half hour. We, uh, I have final confirmation that after discussing the situation with Hikaru, that uh, the draw will stand, uh, mainly because, as he and I both agreed off camera, that uh, given that there was really no legal way for her to lose the position, and it uh, was clearly a mouse click, seemed like the right thing to do. However, what should be noted is that it is in the rules that uh, mouse clicks and mouse slips stand, for those who've been with us the whole time. And not only that, having resigned confirmation is an option. Hikaru actually has it on, and he says for that exact reason. So to be fair, if you play a lot online, you're kind of aware of these things. So I understood that, uh, and I think we're making the right call. So for those of you who follow and care or have any idea what I'm talking about, it will be adjusted to a draw. However, um, if this were a close match, the mouse, the mouse click, misclick of resign would have stood. So, end of discussion, moving on from that topic. Robert, what can she do to win some bullet games? Well, I mean, we keep talking about playing quickly, but unfortunately this is Hikaru Nakamura's best time segment where he's just such a monster at bullet chess. She has a great position here. She should play just any, really, really any move, but I thought she should play D5 herself because this is Black's idea is to play D5. And so... Um, here, with the H file being open, white is up a pawn, but clearly a card is going for rook D, to, rook D, H8, rook takes H4, potential sacrifices. And so that is why Ifan took on D5. Okay, so now 
hmm, the 984 is very strong here and very frustratingly strong. So go queen. I'm trying to figure out a best way to defend. Wait, knight takes g6, followed by rook takes c6. That was a missed opportunity. Okay, so now I took on h4. And, well, black is worse here because black is hoping for some sort of attack. But with the rook on g2, the king is very safe. So I think Yifan's doing great, except for the clock situation right now. She's uh, really struggling with the time. And now Hikaru has complete domination over the light squares. Yep. So his disadvantage has definitely been shrinking. And now rook f to g1 is the idea for white. But this pawn on h7 is actually really difficult to f attack any further with this rook on h6. So now rook h3. E3 is falling. This is now Hikaru's game for the taking. So rook takes E3 is a free pawn. Next is... Oh, as I say, knight takes f4, but then hung a piece. But rook h3 back, yeah, that's that's good. Can't take on g6 because rook h2 is mate. And win by resignation. 19. Actually, 18 and a half, but uh, will be will be adjusted momentarily. But yeah, so he's, uh, he's a monster. He's pretty good at bullet. Yeah, this is very impressive. I mean, just his just display in recent games, just with the 10-0 score in the three-minute segment, and now his bullet prowess will be on full display. It's very, very impressive. So now with the white pieces, uh -huh. he's he's opted for this setup where, okay, the king has to move for black, but the king on c7 is very, very safe. And so just take on c8 back. So now knight d6, okay, you have a knight d6, I'll just go rook d8. It's not actually going to do anything on that square. So, okay, knight to e4. Now white can go g4, g5 to undermine the protection of the e5 pawn. That's something that black really has to keep an eye on. Um, I would think about playing, so h6, knight, knight c5 happens, and the knight going to e6 is a problem. King c8 looks like the move to play because that way you get out of this knight e6 check. And so king c8, okay, now maybe king c8, but now knight e6. Knight, and 96, she could maybe just play rook g8. I don't know if she needs the bishop anymore. I guess she plays rook g8 anyway. But I'm not, I didn't really want to take the bishop as much as I just want to say black's pieces can't move. And so now after rook e8, bishop takes e7, rook d8's mate. Don't you just lose a piece here? So the knight is trapped. And I don't see how you're getting out of this. Knight yeah. f5, I just go g4. Yeah, g4 is coming. Now knight g7, only move. Knight f8, got to love it. What a strong move, especially in bullet. Then the knight comes to h4. He's going to work it, work it on yeah, g6. He's so quick. Like, it's, it's unbelievable how, how quickly he just finds these tactics. One of the questions move. will be over under how many games Hikaru finishes with more than 45 seconds. <laughs> it might be all of them. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is Upsetting, you know, but honestly, I give uh, you found full full credit. She's fighting, she's playing her best, and well, when you play Hikaru Nakamura, this is sort of what happens. I was just about to say we're going to see a fancy mate with b4 and then knight c8. She defends it, but not enough. It's still mate on c7. Yep. So I'm rooting for her to get a game because um, I'll look at the rating differential here on Chess.com. Yeah, a, single, a single game makes all of Hikaru's plus 3,000 rivals happy. So Does, Hikaru's gaining zero rating points for every win. Yeah. I hope you know that. Yeah, no, it's the, is, uh, he's in the 800-point-plus difference range. Uh, 700. Seven, 700. So I, I think it's, it's 600 is the cutoff, right? Got it. Whoa. And I see Kitty Kitty Hiss Hiss. Gifted a sub, and it's 55 gift subs in this channel. So that's yeah. pretty awesome. Kitty Kitty Hiss Hiss and Chess Bay 94 are, uh, have been nothing short of amazing, along with Snake Mayor, who's been, who's been rocking some gifts. Uh, appreciate everybody. And uh, use your emotes proudly, especially if it's a gifted sub, right? Shake what your mama gave you. Um, <laughs> the, uh, my apologies if there are, if there are some sound issues uh, with my microphone. Uh, but we're going to continue to focus on the chess as what matters here. And uh, <laughs> for the girls, use the emotes for the girls. Tommy Shelby goes, Hikaru is minute bowl. Yeah. That is hilarious. Okay, H where's Hikaru that queen is, on uh, he, would be, he would be left eye Lopez 
if he was you know if he was a member of TLC, he would be the compliment to to Left Eye Lopez, right right eye Naka. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, isn't Rook takes d8 followed by... Is that Queen trapped on a5? So Rook takes d8, takes b4, I guess you have Queen a6 only move. How do I trap your Queen? Wait, Knight c7? Oh, okay, a3 pawn is hanging. Oh, that Queen is barely surviving. So pin the Knight, Rook d1, just... Now c5. Okay, or not. I thought c5 is a bishop on e2 hitting the queen on a6. This also looks good. Oh, she's trapping the queen. She, Hikaru can't stop knight c7. That's why she went bishop f3. That's unbelievable. So I think she, this is it. We could get well, a win. No. Yeah, e7's hanging. So you can't go rook e8 because knight c7. This is finally... This is. Are we in the, the realm of not even worried if Danny's going to jinx it? Yeah. Are we? No, sorry. No, I mean, don't jinx yeah, it. I, I, don't, don't jinx it, Dan. So queen f2, good move, forcing the queen exchange unless you want to lose that bishop on h3. Queen d4 check. No, that's actually a bad decision because black has so many pawns here. Like, this is not that easy to win with all the pawns for black because in white's time travel, eventually black will play f5, e4. So bishop e4, oh, f5, rook d7 check. That was kind of neat. So... Here comes the car responds. And knight a5, good move. King e5, knight c4 check. So keeping the king away. Knight c4 now. e3 check, big blunder. Oh, no. No. And there's the bishop hanging, too. Oh, I thought we were in the realm of no return. This is... Yeah, we definitely need some defawn love. Everybody send positive vibes. We will get a victory. We will get a victory. This is... Yeah, that was her game, but you, you jinxed it, Danny. I didn't. You did. Yes, you did. No, you asked if this was a jinx, Danny jinx moment, and I said, probably, but I didn't want to answer. So... Oh, man. Okay. Take on oh, E5. Man. Wait, isn't Knight... Yeah, that's a pawn. Blame Danny. Blame Canada. Queen F7. Just go. Go bring your queen to G6 or to A... So Bishop G4... Uh oh, something about this looks suspicious. Yeah, I don't like the fact that Black's king is now open. The d5 pawn is weak. Yeah, castling was too slow. The king wasn't in trouble in the center, so I thought move like you know, just trying to make progress in the king side was the way to go there. The car is so fast. He's I up. Think, he's I think he's trying to finish with higher than a minute. He will. He's oh. just absolutely putting on a show here. Yeah, I'm I'm very impressed, honestly. I think I think it's a little fair to say there's a little bit of tilt going, even even as strong as Hikaru is in bullet and as much as Ifon is an underdog. Um it's um I think I think it's be fair to say she's pretty frustrated. I'm sure she'll admit admit as much after the match. Um but she uh she had chances to win games in this match and i'm not saying she still won't get one but um but right now if you had to ask will hikaru reach 30 wins or will she win a game i don't know i don't know which one i would take what how many points does hikaru have right now he's got 21, 21 and, and a half. half he's got 20 minutes left on the total match clock and 21 and a half points to win eight games yeah i think he's getting the 30. really ah uh. No, nah, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a tough call. We'll see how this game goes. I need a few more games under my belt to see how quickly he can win them. And, um, yeah, I'm just reading the chat, which is always a bad idea, but doing it anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, it's sometimes it's a good idea, but people just don't understand certain things and it's, Frustrating to deal with some of the, the comments there, um, but I will say as I look at you know as I'll get back to the actual chess in a second. Um, Ifan is someone who is a phenomenal chess player, and losing Hikaru Nakamura by this score is something that can happen to even the top ten players in the world. I and mean, Maxime, Maxime only scored like ten points against Hikaru, I want to say, and these.
Right. That's true. And, and, Right. But I also just want to point out that, you know, Yifan is about to go on a Rhodes scholarship. She's not, she's, in, she's been studying, she's been getting degrees. And so her entire focus isn't on chess, but specifically about this time control, as you can tell by her rating, she doesn't play on chess.com. So it just, um, it's a bit frustrating for me to continue to see comments that should not even be part of this. But anyway, back to this chess game. Huh. As I, I just realized everything I just said about uh, Ifon wasn't heard by the fans, but only by you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you had uh, some good points there. I did make some good points there. I should repeat it. Um, yep. Because what I was trying to highlight for everyone is that when players of this level are... Are, when things are going well and badly for players of this level, sometimes the results are exponentially bigger than the, than the actual skill gap is. And the, 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 the comparison I made, which Robert agreed with, that's why, he was, that's why you only heard his side of it, is that you know, you'll even see it in best of seven series in the NBA where teams will take turn beating each other by plus 25 points, right? Just because a team loses by 30 points doesn't mean they won't win the next night. But when players at like the, the highest level in the world are playing well, do you really believe that Caruana is 15 games worse than Aronian? I don't. I think he. I think he was frustrated. He was on tilt, as he said, right. And I think that you know, Levon was playing exceptionally well. I think anybody who's been following this match from the start knows that Yvonne has had several games where she had both winning and drawing chances that she was just unable to convert on. So that was my point: is that when players of this level. Are, are playing really well versus another one who's playing really badly, the gap can seem wider than it actually is. And you would agree with that? Yeah. And that's what I was saying that only you heard. That's how I know you agreed. So sorry about that, everybody. Oh, in, in this game, I mean, Hikaru now is just, well, he's dominating this one as well because the problem is his backwards pawn e6 and all the queenside pawns are falling off the board. And just look how quick Hikaru is playing. Um, how quickly, I should say. He's at oh, 55 seconds after 33 moves. He's just playing instantly every single move. And it's, honestly, I'm just impressed. Always when I watch a car play bullet, I'm impressed. When I play against him, I'm just devastated because he makes me feel terrible. Yep. Um, because he just moves so quickly and you know wins every single game. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Hi Hikaru just, he's got the force when it comes to bullet chess. So queen takes a four is now by rook d8 check. That is a nice tactic that Hikaru has set up. So queen b6 played in retreat. Now go back to d4, and you're trying to hope for an end game where um, you have some chances to. So rook takes a4. Now I would play. Okay, so di different move order, but I would have taken on a4, given up the e6 pawn, and try to trade queens after that. So take on a4. So she took with the queen. Yeah, it feels like rook takes was stronger, but okay. Oh, she'll get the queens off, and now she will be able to. Well, she has well, no time. She's she playing no a card, so I will not say she will be able to draw, but it is a draw. Yes, theoretically, it's a draw. Practically, with no time on your clock, it's going to be very difficult here. Um, so, let's see. Okay, she's doing really well here. She's playing quickly. She's you know has the drawing technique. Of course, it's it's not actually that hard over the board and with time on your clock. But when you have eight seconds on every move, uh, and you're worried about flagging, then it becomes much more difficult. So H5 She's by doing Black. the right thing, though. And for those of us who we've all seen people win and lose um, games like this that they shouldn't, but good advice on the from the chess perspective is the best way to draw these work endings is to kind of do exactly what she's doing. Basically, don't do anything. Yeah. If you can sit tight, um, for the most part, it's it's very difficult for to make progress um, without a blunder. Uh, and so if you sit tight and don't blunder, you should be able to draw. Um, yep. And actually, especially with no time on your clock, if you make a move at like H5 and then white goes yep. G5, now yep. you have more things to be nervous about. So exactly. I, I think you're right. Just and and often people, the people who lose these end games, I mean, you know, Robert and I say it's an easy draw, but I mean, I've had students, uh, people lose these end games all the time, but almost always it's because they change something about the position unnecessarily. There are types of games where in order to draw, you have to find an accurate defense. But there are a lot of types of games where if you don't, 
change anything, your opponent doesn't have a winning plan. Although, as I say that, Hikaru is, uh, I think she did eventually allow one potential check that was too much because now he is breaking through. Right, and then the H and F pawn versus Rook and H and F pawn versus it's Rook. still a draw. Is, yeah, it's very fact, difficult. This is a draw if, she just, if, he, if he just checks her. So she should check him and continue checking him, but she's going she's gonna to lose in time, yeah. and there she does. Well, uh, down on time she goes. We've said that before today. <laughs> uh, but uh, it has been quite the show by Hikaru Nakamura. And historically in the speech as championship match, as we look back on, on everything, it's, it's certainly impressive to see one of the more lopsided victories for Hikaru, regardless of who he's playing. Um, or uh, I mean, we've. I, what was the biggest margin of victory we've had? I don't know. It's a good question. We should ask our. And that wasn't to say, regardless of, of who he's playing, that Yifon didn't have more potential. But obviously, I meant that this is a very, very big mismatch on paper, and Hikaru is showing why it was a big mismatch. <laughs> yes, he is. And let's see, with here with the black piece. It, wait, there's an exchange missing. I was like looking. Uh, just try to see if we had information about the the uh, largest differential, and then I look at the board and blacks up in exchange. So, yeah, this is this is rough. So knight d5. I don't know if I would have given up control of that square. So wait, c takes b5. No, then pawn takes b5. Ooh. So c b. Wait, what if I take on b5 and then take on f6? And then take on b5 again. It wasn't that a, a pawn? Ooh. Oh, the rook on c1 is misplaced. Oh. So that was a, that was a nice It was tactic. a nice tactic. That's why I said ooh when I saw it, and then I went ugh. <laughs> I went ooh, and then ugh. Although Hikaru, that 9 on d5 is still a monster, man. I mean, I don't know that, that white doesn't have a certain amount of compensation here. Um, the car is so fast with the tactics. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, he saw bishop g5 instantly before she even made the move so i'm very impressed more so, than a minute on the clock again it's it's, it's just like amazing when you see somebody who's this good at bullet wait knight takes e5 was a tactic there she yeah. missed it knight takes e5 everybody if the rook took there was queen f6 check so go back to d3 and hope that he misses it again yeah. but then rook takes a4 queen takes yeah, c4 it doesn't isn't. work anymore owie Go knight d3 and pray. Uh, okay. I think I think she partly saw that she missed knight takes e5 too. If I had to guess. Yeah. This is uh. This is. Uh, it's tough. Very very tough here. Yep. So let's see. What's going on in this game? So we see the setup multiple times with the pawn going to e4, mm -hmm. um, firmly protected. Wait, now bishop e7. You have to take with the king. And because of uh, threats of knight takes d5. Yeah. Which means now she's... Now so she's 98, knight, 98 there was probably superior. It's also just amazing to appreciate how... Obviously we know because of how fast he is, but... How many of these types of positions, Robert, that Hikaru has probably had before, right? He's, he's had so many of these tricks and so many of these positions before because he's played so many online blitz and bullet games that it's, you know, partly the reason why he's able to find them so fast. Yep. No, that was, this game is very impressive and indicative of exactly what you said. It's an yeah. indicative not just of talent, but of experience because yep. Hikaru plays this really offbeat opening um, which Ifan clearly didn't know. She made a blunder, and he's just moving instantly. He's got a minute and four seconds on the clock, and, well, this is just demolition time. So now yep. knight g5 check, f takes g5, rook, rook f6 check was the tactic. That would have been really, really sweet because the knight was pinned, double pin, double rainbow, <laughs> double pin. Well, now, now Black's position doesn't Isn't look so as bad, bad as actually, yeah. She doesn't have a lot of time, but that's one of those cases where Hikaru, if he had spent a few seconds, might have found the better move. But uh, okay, he's still up. On, he's still up over a minute. Hard to be critical of Hikaru right now, but uh, 
but it's amazing. Amazing that he's still above a minute. Yep. So take, check, push, push him, baby. And then D5's hanging with check. And he has already pre moved. He's at he's 106 so... right now. Knight F6 would have won in exchange because the G8 square uh, with check. Hey, when but you're trying is... to pre move to keep yourself above. Oh, he blundered. Above, he I know, blundered. I was going to say, he's, he's getting himself in trouble with his, with his challenge of himself to stay above a minute. I just know that that's what he's thinking. That that's so Rook at five. Play. play Rook at five. No, she Rook, rook at five. five. She, she could have played it. Now she's never playing Rook at five, obviously. Yep. Now he's so, uh, he's going to bring the knight around to f5 at some point. Well, then I take on e7, I guess. So, uh, okay, yeah. So king g6. Draw? I think this would, with best play, this should be a draw, but with the clock situation as it currently is. I don't think Hikaru's going to take the draw. He'll. No way. So I'll play. He'll do something. Come up well, with... his, king, his king is cut off. That's a real problem. There's yeah. no way to actually. Yeah, Make he'd like progress. to do something, but he can't really because his own king. Ah, he found a trick, a four trick. Rook f6, okay, or king f6. Wait, he if now, she lost now. the a5 pawn. Yep. Now it's over. Well, she put yep. the king on h6, which was a mistake, because that put, put her in territory, everyone, where he could actually fork on f5 um, and win the rook on e7. So, uh, But under time pressure, sometimes you forget things like that. And uh, six minutes left for him to reach 30 games. Yep. Um, I really just want this to uh, come to a conclusion. I just, it's hurting. It's hurting for sure. Um, so let's see. Queen F6, okay. So H4. I mean, she's still playing aggressively. She's playing well. Um, but time is never her friend. That's the real issue. So yep. Bishop G7 takes. Okay. H5. Rook A4. That's a funny square. But King B1, just protect. Yeah, if you take on h4 with your rook i'll play rook f1 so he, nakamura protects the f file but e5 just keeps going after now queen h4 is about queen c3 checks that's why queen e5 was played and queen f2 you couldn't go rook f8 because a7 was hanging so you find doing very well on both sides of the board here in fact playing brilliantly in this one queen takes c7 is a free pawn so th this is one of those games where you know we're like we've seen we've been here before we've seen her get a great position what seems like an insurmountable lead in mm -hmm. terms of the evaluation but clock situation happens and all goes wrong so Here she has a lot of time though i mean you'd i was wondering if she should have just gone for queen h8 there but okay um the queen h8 is calling my name why not yep queen h8 was very good there um He's setting up a perpetual. Uh-oh. The more she opens her king. So well, queen h8, just bring your queen in? Queen h8 has been winning for some time. Oh, really? Not, I just, not anymore. Just looks, but I, I looks mean, it was, phenomenal. it was winning the h7 pawn with check for quite some time. So Got it. Okay, now she has... Uh, he has she has queen g8, bishop to g6. So queen g5 check, there it is. Queen G5. Wow, she's got a lot of time left. Yeah, no, this is... Bishop f5. Okay, queen h5 check, should still be okay. Queen she's G5. trying to make a draw. Bishop f5. Bishop Play f5. bishop f5. Bishop f5 wins. Or, yeah. Okay, there you go. She goes for it. Now queen d8 checks a threat, so you have to do something about this oh. bishop. Did he miss Queen that? h6. Wait, so what do you do now? Queen g6. Yep, she played it. B6 hangs the check if you go to oh, D8. He's going for it, though. Take on B6. Queen Just take on B6. Queen takes B6 with check. No. Queen takes no. B6 with check was winning. She did everything correct. Every It was winning. Now she'll have to settle on a draw. If Hikaru takes on D7 and tries to flag her, that would be so... Nasty. That would be something. Yeah. But so it's... 
it's crazy because yep. in you know, a FIDE game or something, you still get points for beating someone tremendously lower than you. But well, in fact, Hikaru and, and, just... And Yifan just got a whole bunch of points for that. <laughs> Hikaru <laughs> gets uh, minus, <laughs> minus eight points for his effort today. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, so... Okay, she got she got that half point. She yeah. should have won that game too. Should have won that game. But we've been there before, right? With yeah, that, this with is that a evaluation and I think like I said, which is why I feel that it's not unfair to say that part of the result here is also just uh what happens when you start losing a match like this? It, you, these these players don't get to take a rest day and they don't even get to take really 10-15 minutes to refresh themselves, you know. Yeah, they don't even get 10, 15 seconds. As soon as the game's right. over, I mean, they have to so play another one. It's, you know, these things are, are really trials of, of uh, you know, an epic online blitz or bullet session, you know, that these, you know, these players have played. But this is like, if you were losing this badly and not on camera and required to keep playing, what would you do? You would probably just stop, go get a drink, maybe throw your computer out the window and call it a day, you know? I mean, <laughs> like the fact that you have to keep playing right now and you're down 20 games is just not fun. So I like Black's position here. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's rough. I, I like Black's position. Time situation, okay for now. The one second increment, you know, it is a lot of, for those who are experienced with Bullet, you know, I play quite a, quite a deal of Bullet on chess.com server. Yeah. The one second increment is actually pretty huge. Um, but the problem is if you're not super experienced with pre-moving and when to pre-move and things like that, it becomes very difficult no matter what increment is on the board. So, uh, yep. Yeah, and, and, I, I agree with uh, Plector, Plector Rama. Plector Ruma just said that, you know, yeah, she's lost a lot of games, but she's had a lot of good positions. And clearly in terms of the chess strength, she deserves to be in this event and will be back. And uh, I, don't, I don't expect her to, if she, well, I don't expect a lot of people to beat Hikaru anyway in this format. So, but, uh, you know, I think, um, I think she just needs to work on her time management. Yep. So let's see. King H4 here for Hikaru. That's super frustrating to see that king on H4 because you, you have a light squared bishop, which means you can never give it a check. And so the king is in a beautiful position here. Just It's going to stay there for the rest of the game. You can't move your rook from... Well, you can move your rook from H8 because if I take on H5, then I might get myself mated. So now king F6. Oh, can go king F6 is D6 pawn hangs. So is Ifan just going to go back and forth? Like rook b8 now. What are you What are you laughing about? I'm just laughing there? at some of the Twitch comments. Oh, yeah. So now h5 is going down. <laughs> yeah. F5. Wait. F5. Creative way to Whoa. break through. I like it. That was really nice. Yeah. Check. Check again. Push the seep on. Yep, and then play rook g5 check or. Wait, what? What's yep. going on here? That felt like the wrong decision by Hikaru. Hikaru. I agree. I mean, now his king is actually trapped in a way that changes the way you look at the yang. Okay. Not anymore, I guess. I king guess. King f7? Oh, it's not mate. I was like, wait, isn't rook h2 mate? But the king obviously came out. Wait, so the rooks just check forever now? It looks like it. Yeah, not worth playing this one on for a win. Um, so, a draw. A draw again, and Hikaru is officially below 3,100. Let's just say he lost the match. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's losing rating points. Wait, did they start this before the time went out? Sorry, what? Do they start this game? I guess they started just before the they clock. I, I'm it's, pretty sure it counts, although I admit I wasn't following um, closely enough to say. But, uh, okay, I think I think we let them play before the interview portion begins. Ah, time was up for about 30 seconds, but they rematched, and we didn't notice. Well, let's right. see what's going on here. So, Yifan with the white pieces, again, more space. And what Hikaru's done really well, Danny, yep. and 
got to give him credit. He's done such a good job of getting positions without symmetry, and he's been retaining the knights and giving his uh, Ifan the bishop. Mm -hmm. So he's done a really good job of doing that to make sure that he can control the squares that the bishop is not on. And in a position like, well, I don't know about f5. That, that move looks quite bad, actually. Isn't well, D6? But I think you're right also just from a practical point of view that it creates an, oh, she just wins a pawn here, but creates an imbalance that allows her to outplay, allows him to outplay her. And I think it's, in some ways, it's harder to deal with a knight and bullet against the knight because you're, you're, you're always in danger of being tricked. And so I agree with you. I think that the practical decision that he's had to, to have a lot of knight versus bishop positions has helped. Yep. Oh, that, okay, there's got to be a mate looming. It's one of those positions where you see that bishop on f2, mm -hmm. rook on d8 combination. So c4 pawn of oh, rook d1. I don't know about that. Yeah, rook d1 felt a little bit too um, defensive. Yeah, rather than something like queen f3 while the rook was on the 8th rank. So not not sure. She is still up a pawn. No, yes, she is. Yes, she's a pawn. But... I would play b4 here. I don't know if it works, but I'm, you know, right. playing b4 to try Last to break Last game open. of the year, Dan. Can't hold anything back now. Right. Exactly. <laughs> if, if queen e8 here, b4. Just, just I'm not sure it. the players know it's the last game, but I believe we have notified them. So, And if they start another one, we will definitely abort it. According to yep. our official match game clock, which is a couple seconds off the show, I guess somebody said that they felt that they got the game in. But either way, Bob's your uncle. Game's being played, and it counts. Yep. Danny, can you turn into Coach Klein? Coach Klein. <laughs> Should I call you Red Beaulieu? <laughs> you are. I mean, you, you make a Waterboy reference, and I just got to... You got to bring it. I got to continue it, right? I, I don't have a choice. But okay, so Queen D6. Uh, light squares, queens and knights. B4. Cats and dogs there. living together. It was a little bit too late, though. Now yeah, it was C4's way falling. too late, honestly. C4 falling? Bueller? No, if you take on C4, I'd probably go B, C5, and then Rook, C1, and then C5 would fall. Oh, the knight, the knight was overwhelmed there. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a losing endgame. Yep. H-pawn is strong, man. <laughs> yep. And winning the G-pawn as well. And with it, the game the match, the set, is over. And yep. uh, we will actually bring both players on on with us here. With us here. If they are... If they uh, are... Uh, if they're here. Yvonne, they're here, I'm here. Down here. Yvonne, can you Yvonne, hear me? Yvonne, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you mind putting, do, on, do you mind headphones? putting on headphones? It seems like there's an seems echo. Like there's... Am I the only one getting it? No, I hear the echo, too. No, I don't. That's better. Okay. Well, um, Ifan, I uh, obviously, obviously, it was a, it was a tough match, but it felt that there were a lot of games, a lot of a lot of good positions you had, and a lot of games where, um, without without some time pressure, the result could have been different. Uh, whether it was games that could have been drawn or or wins, and what was your perspective on that? Did it just feel that? Being down on time was a, was a big part of the problem, and at least from our perspective, it seemed like the, the quality of chess was really good, just down on time in a lot of games. Yeah, exactly. I thought I really spoiled a lot of good games, uh, like uh, uh, most of in five and also three, which I, I'm quite disappointed. Like I missed so many good positions, but actually, definitely my speed could be improved quite a lot in case to really want to improve the results. Right. Uh, the uh, Hikara, what, what were your thoughts on that? How, how did you feel you played today? Obviously, a, 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 a great match victory, and congratulations moving on. And but, what were your thoughts on the on the chess and how how some of those games broke down in time scrambles? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in, the, in the five minute, really, the start of the match uh, was crucial. Once uh, Lee Fan did not get, um, she didn't she didn't win any of those first couple of games. Uh, once I got the big advantage, I felt like it really was never in danger. Um, I mean, that being said, at some point when you're up by so many games, it becomes a little bit difficult to uh, to stay focused. And, uh, I mean, I felt like in the three minute already I was starting to drift a little bit, and then the bullet certainly it was just uh, the same thing. But 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think in the five minute at least, uh, Li Fang got some great positions, um, and, but I defended quite well, and she wasn't able to uh, convert in, in the end game. Hikaru, you tend to be pretty, you know, emotive, at least facially. There was one game where um, you won, but white, uh, Ifan could have played C8 equals queen, and you were shaking your head for like the first, I don't know, 20 seconds of the, the game after that. Did you just like, you know, did you see that afterwards? And yeah, I can, <laughs> your head not, uh, seems to give it away here. Yeah, I mean, I think what happened is, well, first of all, now that I'm thinking back, I think I could have played rook g2 and g5 now that I think about it instead of rook g3 and rook yep. h2. But, but yeah, I think the thing is that I just, I thought it was just mating, and I calculated a few moves before when I played f5, and then I, I don't think it registered right away. And then as soon as the game started, it's like, it, it suddenly hit me. It's like, wait a second, c8 defends h3. And um, and so, yeah, I realized that. And obviously that that could have, uh, that, that would have, if uh, Lee Fon had played C8 queen equals queen, um, it would have been a very, it would have been a lot closer, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, sometimes those sorts of oversights happen, uh, and if you're fortunate enough to not, um, to not, to, to not lose when you make those sort of errors, it's generally going to go your way. Ifan, I know you don't play online blitz and bullet as much as as much as uh, Hikaru or or some others, but is it is it something that you feel? Um, have a hard time managing time pressure under under uh, when you're in a time scramble, or do, do you feel like it was just that Hikaru is so fast that it, you know because he's really good too? So, what, what were your thoughts on that? Is this something that makes you want to play more online blitz and bullet? Yeah, I think I should do that. So yeah, definitely Hikaru plays so fast at me, especially shows in the bullet chess where I felt like uh, you know like the person is throwing and I actually didn't notice few times actually it's my turn to move so I thought that probably I should more get used to that I mean basically it's just like um, let's say a personal choice because we already spent too much time with the computer therefore I don't really I mean very keen to play online but probably I should do that more often later on you'll have a lot of time coming up while at Oxford right I'm sure you'll have plenty of time for chess online <laughs> Um, obviously kidding, but uh, when did you know that you you missed the chance that the game that uh, Robert just asked Hikaru about to, to to queen on c8 and and actually you were winning in the final position when you resigned or did you did you were you just kind of frustrated at that point and didn't didn't see that? Uh, I didn't really notice on that game particularly. Okay. Um, well, Hikaru, we uh, we talk a little bit about the the next matchup that you'll be having here. Uh, you will be facing the winner of Maxime Vache Le Grave and Lanier Dominguez Perez. You said you feel that off the, I, th I think it was before the show started, you told me and Robert you felt that MBL was probably the favorite, but that Dominguez you think could could upset him in that match. Who would you rather play? Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I think actually I'm, I'm going to pick Dominguez to win that match. Um, oh. if, if you force me to pick someone, I'm going to pick Dominguez to win that match. Okay. Um, but I expect it to be very close, and I've played both of them many times. Um, I think I, I kind of would prefer to play Dominguez simply because uh, I think I've played Maxime every every speed champion, chess championship so far, and obviously we've played a lot in the Grand Chester. So it would be nice to have a little variety, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if Maxime wins. So it should be interesting. Got it. Well, uh, Ifan and Higari, it was a great match as far as uh, the fans and the uh, the chess entertainment instruction was concerned, so we, we uh, appreciate that. Robert, you have any final questions before we let our players go? Uh, no, it's pretty late here in New York, so I think uh, I'm out of questions for this one. Okay. Well, Ifan, it's not late there. Your day's just getting going, so have, have a great one. A little bit a little bit better match start time than your first year against Carwana, but we hope to have you back next year again and uh, and uh, maybe with a little bit more experience in the format, um, a better result, maybe. So. Okay, thank you, Benny. Thank you so much. Hey, Carl, congratulations, and uh, we will see you in uh, the next matchup. And uh, cheers. Thanks to all the fans, everyone who tuned in, everyone who donated for the prize fund for the players. Um, and uh, all of our subscribers, all of our members, we appreciate you. We love you. We're out. I think we're going to send a, uh, a host here. So if you're in the mood for some chess, don't go anywhere and watch the next person up. And Robert, I will see you on Sunday with Wei Yi taking on Wesley Sell.